There is a crowd of people on the street of the city, and the story begins with the fact that amazing things happen in this world. And from that moment, the story of Tenma begins. He couldn't even imagine that he would be watching his own goodbyes. They were in the farewell room. His family grandfather, he asked them not to cry. He's here, even though he can't help. Someone turned to the guy saying, in that case, the guy looked at who it was, a figure appeared in front of him, smiling and listening to his sad thoughts. It was the goddess who offered to go to another world. Tenma got scared and tried to find out who it was and what he had done to him. He was offered an image with which he would look like this in the next life. The man asked if he wanted to go to his world. Tenma turned pale and the man with a grin asked if he had seen a ghost here. The man grabbed a glass and Tenma asked him to calm down. They started fooling around, both grabbed the glass, at the same time telling him to control himself and put down the glass. The glass was flying in the air and people began to turn around at it. You'd think it was a poltergeist, and the man claimed that he had not said anything strange. Tenma did not consider this an ordinary conversation. Then, as it turned out, a god from another world spoke, he introduced himself after Tenma calmed down. God came to take him with him, and the main character wanted to return to his former appearance. God asked with a grin, and even with love to give him his soul, and the guy looked at him in surprise. And then he turned his back to the cries of God that he had expressed himself incorrectly. The deity began the story. There is a need to establish a balance in their world, and he wants Tenma to be reborn in it because he has powerful soul energy. The guy was surprised that he had powerful energy. He went on to say that, even as a ghost, he is able to influence the world of the living, as he did before, trying to throw a glass at the deity. And if he agrees, he will be endowed with special abilities and will be able to preserve his memories and knowledge. Tenma was surprised and thought they were in an online game. The deity had already started begging and the guy said he would think about it, and having made another suggestion that before he leaves this world, he will be able to make one wish and it will fulfill it with the help of magic. Tenma agreed, which God was glad of. The guy began to think about the desire and decided to make the memories of his loved ones become more vague. The deity was surprised, it did not understand why. Tenma didn't want people important to him to cry. He asked if he could do it. God replied that he could completely erase their memories of him. The guy refused because he would already be sad. The deity's eyes filled with tears, he said he would do everything. And Tenma told them to live a long life, including for him. The people standing next to him hoped that he was able to reach heaven safely. A faint smile appeared on the face of the man lying in the flowers of Tenma, they thought that he looked happy. God informed them that they were going to purgatory. An explanation of what was visible to the eye also followed. There were gods there who were touched by his act, because he is the first person to receive powers from so many gods. He looked at everyone and heard his name Atori Tenma. The guy was immediately greeted from all sides, he was praised and rejoiced that he had met such a kind person for the first time. Everyone was glad to see him, and they were surprised that the god who brought him could also do a good job. It was the god of creation and said with a smile, welcome to our world. The phantasm will begin preparations for his rebirth. He will fall asleep and be blessed with a happy life in the new world. Tenma said good night. All the gods wondered if they had overdone it, because they had invested in him the power of the highest level that a human can reach, he was endowed with tremendous divine protection. They were wondering how strong he would be. There was no denying that he would be able to measure his strength against the gods, he had many skills, swordsmanship, vision in the dark, cooking, archery, endurance, resilience, stealth, perception skill and more. And then he was reborn. Birds were singing in the tree, but his basket was on the shore of monsters who were yelling that it was food. He realized that the point of rebirth turned out to be too inappropriate a place. It has been ten years since the rebirth. Different things happened. Tenma runs and, addressing her grandfather, says that today she will give him a head start. Grandpa turns towards Tenma, laughing at him, and tells him to try. 
Tenma was reborn into a baby, and the point of his rebirth turned out to be a thicket of forest teeming with terrible monsters. There was nothing he could do, but fortunately, a young couple picked him up and made him part of their family. Cherishing the memories of his old life, he continued to enjoy the new world. But because of the grace that the gods showed him, at such an early age he was able to tame slime. The people around Tenmu were shocked by his abilities, they said they would make a great adventurer out of him. Even if Tenma has no blood relation to the people who saved him, he is his precious family. Grandpa abruptly jumped towards Tenma, shouting that it was not the time to count the crows. Tenma turned to his grandfather and asked with a sly smile if he thought he was distracted. He abruptly put his hands forward, pushing his grandfather away so hard that his hat flew off his head. The grandfather sighed in surprise, saying that the victory was his. Tenma smiled, and Grandpa said that he could only praise him for his ability to correctly assess the situation. As promised, he will give his consent to go to the Forest of Elders. His task is to take the hat off this grandfather. The guy shouted to his grandfather to wait, but he replied that he had already promised. Then his parents approached Tenma. My father says that he has already said that my grandfather has senile farsightedness, does not look at his feet at all. He replied that it was a little mean. Grandpa started telling Tenma that the Forest of Elders is in a rank dungeon. It's very scary there. There are low-level monsters living there, they are weak, but they can take the number. And recently there have been rumors that a huge magical beast has been spotted in the forest. Tenma's father asked if there were no monsters in the area of the entrance to the dungeon, and Grandpa replied that even the villagers go there for a walk. Tenma's parents were against it, so he began to persuade them to let him go to the forest of elders. His mother told him to come back as soon as he felt something was wrong. He was very glad that he was released. Tenma stood at the entrance to the forest and thought that it was time to become a real adventurer. He was happy, even the word danger made his whole body tremble, he wanted to get started as soon as possible. As he walked, he thought about taking revenge on those goblins. He said that he used to live in the village, but this is the first time he has been to such unexplored lands. Tenma said that since he had the opportunity, he would go deeper. He was glad that he had mastered levitation. Tenma stopped and found that he had found a great place to explore. Of course, he is still far from a bird's eye view. The guy started to get off the ground and began to levitate. After taking off, he began to observe the clouds in the sky. Tenma landed on the ground and saw many different animals in front of him. He was surprised by this. The animals started running towards Tenma. At first he thought that the animals were attacking him, but then he realized that they were running away from someone. Turning around, he saw the silhouette of a huge, terrifying animal. It turned out to be Fenrir. He had heard that Fenrir lived in the thickest part of the forest, and he could not believe that it turned out to be true. Tenma thought that it would be very bad if Fenrir reached the nearest village. The guy was trying to take off, but then Fenrir created a strong wind wave, which is why he couldn't do it in time. Fenrir's breath was strong and icy. Shards of ice flew at him. Tenma landed on the ground and a wall of ice formed behind him. The guy was surprised that Fenrir didn't hit him. He thought it was an attempt to scare him off. The guy drew attention to the terrible wounds of Fenrir. Suddenly, he heard a hissing sound behind him. Turning around, he saw dragon snakes in front of him. He thought Fenrir was aiming at them. Fenrir was able to grab one of the snakes, and then he went to the second Fenrir. He was surprised that there was another Fenrir in front of him. He wondered if they were trying to fight off the snakes. The guy also noticed that they were both seriously injured. Could these snakes have caused such huge damage to the Fenrir? Tenma suddenly noticed that one of the Fenrir had a big belly. He immediately guessed that it was a pregnant female and a male. Tenma said that since the Fenrir were trying to protect their family, he couldn't leave them in the lurch. The guy started using magic, he waved his hand towards the snakes, and earthen needles formed under them. One of the Fenrir managed to grab the attacking snake and throw it aside. He and Fenrir exchanged glances. The guy turned around and saw a lot of snakes in front of him. 
he was surprised that they could be surrounded. Turning around, he was shocked by the number of dragon snakes. He didn't care about himself, but Fenrir shouldn't get wet in the cold rain. Tenma thought about it, he realized that the rain could play into their hands. The guy waved his hand towards the snakes again and earthen spears were already formed in front of them. Fenrir was surprised by this. Tenma didn't know if Fenrir would understand him, but asked him to use ice breath. Fenrir seemed to understand Tenma and started using ice breath. Tenma guessed that the magic of the beast could freeze rain. After the magic worked, Tenma informed them that they needed to hide, they managed to gain about an hour of time. Tenma exchanged glances with the Fenrir and told them to run quickly before the snakes caught up with them again. Tenma and Fenrir were able to break away from the snakes. He was very tired while running. Suddenly, one of the Fenrir came up behind Tenma and started licking his cheek. The guy said that they should not overcool and offered to hide from the rain. Tenma suggested that the Fenrir hide in the shade of the leaves. He also informed Salalin that he could get out of the backpack. Suddenly, one of the Fenrir began to lag behind him. The guy noticed it. Tenma turned around to see what had happened. In front of him, he saw Fenrir, who was very wary. The guy didn't understand what was going on. Tenma began to guess what the problem was. The guy saw that the female Fenrir was lying on the ground. He ran up to her and noticed that her water had broken. The female Fenrir was writhing in pain. Tenma realized that she had gone into labor, but there was nothing he could do. The guy thought that he could only create a barrier so that the enemy could not detect her. Tenma felt responsible, he had to protect her instead of her father. He started to create a barrier around Fenrir, he had very little time left when suddenly he heard a strange sound. When he approached the female Fenrir, he saw a little Fenrir that had just been born. The kid immediately stood up and began to shake himself off. The guy shed tears when he saw such a cute picture in front of him. He was surprised at how snow white the little Fenrir's fur was. Little Fenrir was looking at the world in front of him when suddenly Tenma took him in his arms and brought him to his mother. Fenrir, who had just been born, began drinking his mother's milk. He was glad that everything had gone well. There was gratitude in the eyes of the female Fenrir. Tenma continued to watch the little Fenrir and his mother, but then something went wrong, the guy was scared of it. The guy approached the Fenrir, they looked very tired. Their eyes began to slowly close. Tenma was terrified. The male, the golden Fenrir, and the female, the silver Fenrir have passed away. He was very upset about this, he promised to become the family of little Fenrir. Taking the baby in his arms, Tenma began to come up with a name for him. He decided to name him Siramaru. With the beginning of a new life, the sad rain came to an end. The guy and the dog went home. A week later, Siramaru grabbed the sheet with his teeth and barked. Tenma was sitting on the bed and trying to stop the dog. Before his rebirth, he had only adult pets. He shouted at the dog to let go of the sheet because he could tear it. It was the beginning of a rosy life. Tenma shouted let go. Then he fell to the floor, he realized that his head was protected and that he was still weak. The guy thanked Slaylin, he could not imagine how difficult it was to keep a little Fenrir. The world of fantasy is divided into three continents. The largest was the continent of Ulans, consisting of three kingdoms, clusters, humble, and the Republic of Gilst. The point of Tenma's rebirth was the edge of the Clustan Kingdom, the village of Kukiri. Tenma was reading a book on the care of magical beasts. As he thought, Fenrir are different from ordinary puppies. He remembered the neighbor's dog, and thought that taking care of Fenrir would be similar to how a neighbor took care of his puppy. The guy looked at Siramara and realized that his teeth had erupted, which surprised him because ordinary puppies do not begin to erupt until the third week of life. What else to expect from a magical beast? It's all because he already wants meat. He wondered if it was time to introduce baby food. By the way, the end of his bed linen. Although he is also to blame, he can't even come up with an excuse. He decided to put everything in a bag before mom noticed the laundry didn't fit. Mom came into the room, saying that his father was calling him. 
She laughed at the torn underwear because Siromaru is still very young. He wanted to teach him discipline properly, but Fenrir decided to fool around a bit, after which they headed to the shower. Tenma apologized to his father for the delay while holding a wet Shiromaru. The father asked what happened because they were already waiting. The guy apologized again. They needed to butcher the monster meat that he had brought. They put it in their father's magic bag so it wouldn't spoil. Tenma was surprised and it was explained to him that a clock was superimposed on the magic bag, expanding space and stopping time, so the capacity of this bag is much larger than it may seem at first glance. Time is frozen in the inside of the bag, so it is impossible to carry living creatures in it. The father's bag was of an average level, with a capacity of about 600 kilograms, bags of a higher level are considered rare. This time, the weight of the four defeated dragon snakes was two 400 kilograms. A regular bag couldn't fit that much, but he was lucky to have a space bag. Unlike a magic bag, it does not freeze time, which means that its use is not aimed at carrying quickly perishable products. During hunting, it is convenient to put heavy prey in it and then store it at home. By the way, if you are interested in how a custom-made spatial bag differs from an ordinary one, then it was made using a special technology, and ways to accommodate prey extending 50 meters in each direction, which exceeds the capacity of other spatial bags in addition, it looks no different from an ordinary bag, therefore. There will definitely be people who will want to get it and use it as a tool in a war or during a coup d'etat, and they came up with a spell without which it will be impossible to open this bag tenma. After all, it is unlikely that the inhabitants of this world will be able to think of such a thing. Everything was ready, and they decided to start butchering the dragon snake meat. First, they had to get the core of the demon and separate the head, they would take the fangs and skull from the head. It was also necessary to separate the organs from the bones. Snakeskin is easily removable. They decided to take meat only for today. There was a bone in Siramaru's teeth. Tenma looked at him, and he looked at him with cheerful eyes, asking him to play. My father said it's not time for games, help butcher the meat. The guy was embarrassed because, as he thought, he was scolded. They threw him meat and told him that it would be enough to start with. The butchering of the meat has begun. Tenma cut up the pieces of meat and tossed them. His father noted approvingly how well he caught the pieces of meat. The guy triumphantly raised his hands with a tray of meat. They shouted joyfully that they had done a great job. Of course, it's a long way from the Fenrir they were doing yesterday, but they managed to get first-class products. Tenmo was annoyed, repeated once again already sad Fenrir. He turned to his father. The guy wondered if they really needed this meat so much. He wanted to say goodbye properly to Siromaru's parents without taking them apart. My father began to explain that large animals pose a huge threat, and if you say goodbye without understanding, then poisonous fumes will be released at best, and if you make a mistake, they can turn into walkers. Therefore, they do this, use the received raw materials for their intended purpose, since this is a cycle of biological material. Tenma thought that his father had a strange way of thinking. His father patted him on the head, saying that he was strange but merciful. He has an unusual value system, it does not correspond to generally accepted common sense. But he sees something that is alien to many people. His father was proud of him. Both Fenrir fought bravely for their family. He didn't want them to suffer after he left. Tenma agreed. These are the rules of this world. They returned and were greeted by their mother. The guy said that they collected a lot of useful resources and sold the remaining meat to the caravan. Mom was glad. Tenma said that he was very tired and felt that after such a job, he would have a great sleep. He remembered that Siromaru had gutted his mattress. Then he was called out it was his mother. She handed him his new down mattress. Itsuki realized that she was made of Fenrir's wool they would like to be near their puppy. A picture appeared before my eyes, two large Fenrir. Tenma thanked his mother for the new mattress, and they went to bed. A month later. If you are going hunting, then before that you should definitely try snake tail soup. And again, rumors about a huge magical beast leaked out of the caravan. 
merchants offered grilled dragon snake meat, classic steaks, and there was also a special offer, dragon snake soup. Rumors spread among the adventurers about high-level monsters that were spotted in the village area. Tenma turned to the waiter and asked for two skewers with grilled snake meat. The waiter thanked him for the order. There was a holiday in the village of Kukuri. Tenma had no doubts about his cooking skills as he had no parents in his previous life and lived with his grandfather. Therefore, he had to cook for himself. Two weeks ago, adventurers began to gather in the village of Kukuri. Thanks to them, the locals were able to make a good profit with the sale of snake meat. Together with his mother, Tenma opened his own shop where they sold meat of various cooking. Everyone liked the meat that Tenma sold with his mother very much. In an instant, their shop became extremely popular with the villagers. That's because because of the rumors, a whole crowd of adventurers moved in search of high-level monsters, any self-respecting adventurer, Merlin said. Merlin went on to say that a self-respecting adventurer hunts for the highest quality resources. Anyway, selling dragon snake meat was a great solution, moreover, it has excellent taste, Merlin continued to reason. Merlin began to talk about how the meat of the dragon snake gives good luck in hunting high-level monsters. A man would never have thought that monsters of the B level and above have such amazing taste. Shiromaru, who heard this, was very scared. Tenmer ran up to Merlin and thanked him for taking care of Shiromaru. Grandpa asked the guy how he was doing and also thanked him for helping and told him to rest a little. Tenma's business was booming. During this time, he earned about 100,000 G. With that kind of money, you could live happily in the village for several years. Tenma asked Merlin if he had a desire to be nostalgic about the past when it comes to adventures. The guy was very interested in hearing stories from Merlin. But then Merlin asked him to stop because he was embarrassed in front of Tenma. Merlin began to talk about how he was born in a small village and was a very gifted but daring child, which is why he often allowed himself to challenge even adult adventurers. When he grew up, he went to the capital and entered the academy, where he met Celia. Having become close friends with the prince himself, he got into all sorts of scrapes more than once during incredible adventures. He was the third son in a family of aristocrats, but despite the prohibitions related to social status and quarrels with older brothers, he entered the most noble school in the country and at the same time became an adventurer. Performing incredible feats, he later left the capital, going on a journey through the vast lands. Ricardo slammed his fist on the table and shouted that there was enough talk about the past. Merlin was surprised by this reaction. Then two girls came up to them. The girls asked the men if they were really the famous Ricardo and the sage Merlin. Grandpa was glad that they were recognized. The girls asked for permission to shake their hands. Merlin refused them, arguing that they needed to look after his grandson. Suddenly, Tenma took off and ran. The guy grabbed Shiro and headed somewhere. When Merlin and Ricardo turned around, they found that Tenma had disappeared somewhere. The guy was glad that his grandfather and father were celebrities. Tenma's mom called out to the guy and said it was time for them to have lunch too. But then she confusedly said to look at what was happening with Shiromaru. Looking at Shiro, Tenma noticed that Fenrir was very hungry. The guy offered him a piece of meat. The dog was very pleased. Tenma continued to feed Shiro. Turning to his mother, he said that there was a whole queue to shake hands with his father and grandfather. Then he asked if they were really as cool as they say. Celia hadn't expected such a question, but she was pleased with it. She confirmed her son's words and began her story. Celia said that they were very strong, so Tenma can be calm, no matter what happens, they will always protect him. Suddenly, they heard plates crashing behind them. It turned out that three men were quarreling there. One of them shouted that they had been tricked and there were no high-level monsters in the dungeon. Another asked for a refund of the money spent on the road. Tenma did not understand why they were fighting over this because they were not small children to make such a fuss about their own failure. It turns out that there are pathetic adults in any world. Suddenly, Shiromaru jumped off Tenma's arms and ran towards the quarreling men. The dog started growling at them. 
one of the men got really angry and said he was going to kick Siramara to hell. Ricardo came up behind them and took Syro by the scruff of the neck. He asked the men to leave the establishment because they would scare off other guests with their noise. The presence of men made them uncomfortable. One of the men told him to shut up because because of them the men got into debt. The man told Ricardo that if he wanted them to leave, he had to give them the money back. Ricardo replied that there was no compensation point here. The man was very angry with him. Ricardo released Syro. The men were about to attack Ricardo when suddenly Merlin appeared in front of them, he told the men to shut up. Tenma and Celia stood to the side and watched the scene in fright. Siramaru ran to the guy in his arms. Ricardo glared at the man and said that he should be responsible for his words. The image of a huge beast immediately appeared in front of the man. Ricardo snapped his fingers and the beast disappeared. The men were scared of what they saw and immediately ran away. Ricardo stood and watched them. Tenma ran towards his father. Ricardo said that such people cannot be called adventurers. Merlin said that in any era there will be hopeless guys. Ricardo turned to his son, saying that everyone should be responsible for their own actions, this is obvious. Tenma listened to him attentively. Ricardo said to remember this once and for all. Tenma hoped that they would calm down on this. Merlin turned to Ricardo and said that he had made them great. Tenma told him not to joke like that. One of the men said that Merlin was completely stunned and asked the others if they had any ideas how to catch him off guard. Suddenly, a man they didn't know came up to them and offered to end Merlin's son. The men were shocked by the surprise. The men asked the stranger who he was, to which he asked why they were so scared, he's just offering to help each other. The stranger managed to injure one of the men with incredible speed and noticed that they also wanted to take revenge on the sage. The stranger said that he was not forcing them to do anything, and then he asked if they agreed. A pack of wolves broke into the village. I urgently needed help from Ricardo and Celia. They ate Hugo's goats. Tenma wanted to go with his parents, but his mother told him to stay at home. Grandpa was supposed to be back later, so if something happened, they counted on him. After the incident with the dragon snakes, his parents became more protective of him. The headman's report indicated that more than ten wolves had been spotted. An order was given to convene a defensive detachment, if possible, to remove them all. In the worst case, they need to be driven away from the village. Even without Merlin, the two of them would be more than enough to destroy the wolves. Tenma was given hope while her parents were away. It was suspicious that the howling of wolves was heard too often. Are they deliberately trying to ensure that the defensive squad immediately discovers their location? Tenma turned to Slaylin and Siramaru, telling them to get into the bag. There's clearly something fishy going on here. He expanded the search area to the maximum. Gone wolves, a moving pack of wolves, a mother and father with a defensive unit. He sees two packs of wolves, suddenly there was a strange movement. The wolves moved in a strange way. It was as if they were deliberately surrounding Dad's squad. Other detachments disappeared from the area. Tenma thought that they could not have been destroyed so quickly, maybe they went beyond the search area, but this is impossible. He could feel the group approaching them. Maybe it was a team making a tour of the village. Suddenly, he turned around, feeling that people were near the house. There was a crash. Two masked men came in, Tenmer realized who it was. He guessed from their sharp blades that they weren't just visiting. He assumed that they had come to take revenge on his father, and they chose him, the child, as a target. They were really stupid. It is obvious that they have not even learned how to read the characteristics of the enemy. They have no right to call themselves adventurers. He realized that the wolves were their handiwork, as he felt the presence of the beast. The radar began to show a group of five, three remained. He couldn't count their abilities. Tenma asked who they were and what they wanted to achieve with the help of these two. The other three burst into the house. After saying surprise, they began to praise the guy for his reaction, and then, looking at the floor, turned to the first ones who entered. He thought he could at least use them as bait. But he didn't care, as he planned to get rid of them anyway. 
Their time is up. Tenma realized that they were dangerous. The main wolf said that he wanted to take them away. The guy jumped back, pulled out a dagger, and one of them maliciously asked, turning around, if he could play with them. One of them tried to attack, but Tenma played with knives, thereby missing. He was captured, but he managed to evade, which the wolves were surprised to say that he had been well trained. The chief ordered the wolves to be recalled, and they wanted to take the guy alive because it was bad if he left their world. Tenma thought they needed a bag. He started to open it, it was difficult to use magic there, but finally he managed to open it. Suddenly, there was an outbreak, the wolves were about to retreat and began to run away. Tenma disappeared, and the wolves lost sight of him, in such rain he could not smell it. The guy realized that the flash had no effect on blind animal people. He was thinking of hiding or waiting it out. Maybe one of the villagers will come to the light or not. There is a possibility that they will decide to attack the villagers who have come. He wanted to deal with them faster. Tenma fell, he couldn't move. The main wolf finally waited for the poison to take effect. His assistant didn't see anything. The chief grumpily asked why it took so long, did he use healing magic? The second one said that the fat one had passed out, and they would no longer be able to summon wolves. Tenmer realized that the poison was in the knife. They began to demand a bag from him, Shiromaru tried to help, Tenma tried to call out to him, but his voice was gone. The dog was thrown away, while yelling at him not to climb, he fell to the floor. Slaylin ran out here and also tried to help but he was also injured. Tenma's friends were disposed of with light hand movements. The villagers started yelling at the wolves and demanded that they move away from the guy. The wolf just said, well, once they were found, there's nothing to be done. Tenma shuddered and felt a hand grab his hair. At the same time, he was told to look carefully. The sound of swords rang out and the guy was accused of this because everything happens because he resisted. They'll get rid of everyone. Tenma began to ask them to stop, turning to shouting. One day, a circus arrived in their village. Mom said they were staying in the village for a while. My father said that only girls perform there, and my mother replied with a grin that it was rare to see such a thing. There was a large group there, and maybe there could be girls his age. My father was sure that they would like Tenma and would be very popular. Popularity surged like a wave to Siramara, everyone screamed cutie. The power of the little fluffy lump has captured everyone, women, men, young and old. In his old world, he had never had the opportunity to watch a real circus performance. But he never thought that he would be able to go to the circus in this world. He was wondering what kind of amazing magic he would be able to see there, ballooning, juggling. Tenma was surprised by the primitiveness, he was waiting for magic. But what kind of nostalgia overtook him, that's exactly how it was. The moment you see something magical in a world where magic does not exist, your heart is filled with pleasant excitement. After the performance, a girl came up to him, she was touched by how closely he watched their performance. Although they are called a circus troupe, they are actually just a bunch of street performers. Therefore, they were afraid that their performance would disappoint them. Tenma immediately began to deny her words, he and the other villagers had a lot of fun. The girls smiled and thanked him. He helped them a lot with the preparation of the scene he was called Dexterous, and they offered to become part of their team. Immediately, Mom completely refused them, saying that it was only our dear Tenma. A guy in a hood ran among a crowd of frightened people and injured them. The man with the wolf's head told him to stop fooling around. The stranger with the wolf's head said to get it over with as soon as possible. Tenma watched in horror the whole time. He was speechless, but he was still conscious. He was very offended by those people. Tenma took out his sword and gripped it tightly in his hand. He got to his feet and was ready to attack. Tenma couldn't do anything about the poison that had already spread through his body. He will recover immediately if he gets rid of the place through which the poison entered the body. The guy carried out his plan and all he had to do was close the wound. This is exactly how his body should be arranged. Tenma was already standing confidently on his feet right in front of the man with the wolf's head. 
The guy raised his sword and pointed it towards the beast man. He lost his arm and was surprised. Tenma used the magic of air dissection. He put ten times more magic power into the punch. The guy told the stranger that if he had leaned back a couple of centimeters, he would have been gone. The man was very angry at Tenma. Tenma raised his sword once more and the beast man was already defeated. It was the first time Tenma had used this technique, but he did it quite well. Of course, it takes much more magical energy than throwing a regular blade, but since a magic blade can be controlled with your own hands, this technique has a huge power, and it is very convenient to use. Tenmu suddenly shuddered, he realized that he had been poisoned again. The guy fell powerlessly to the ground. Tenma began to lose consciousness, his eyes slowly closing. My eyes are getting dark, my mind is clouded. In this world, people easily take each other's lives, and losing a life at the hands of another person is not uncommon. What happens if Tenma takes someone's life? For the first time, he took a human life. Since the moment Tenma was reborn in this world, he has thought about it more than once. Reborn in another world, Tenma is a former Japanese in his soul. The people of Japan have absolutely no developed sense of danger, and they are very gentle by nature. So much so that they say, the Japanese are peaceful to the core. What will happen if Tenma is Japanese? Tenmu couldn't get rid of these thoughts. Will the guy take the lives of people besides monsters? Apparently Tenma's fears were in vain. There are people who are by nature more terrible than any beast, and a guy shouldn't hold back. If the guy doesn't do it, he will lose what he holds dear. This man's head is here not because he is a beast man, but because inside he has become a real beast. Actually, in addition to the beast people with a beast soul, there are also people who are worse than monsters. Tenma kicked the beast man's body. One of the enemies turned to his comrade, saying whether it was time for them to end all this, but then realized that he had been deprived of his life. Tenma moved straight towards this stranger with incredible speed, and he was surprised by this, he did not expect such an action from the guy. The guy attacked his enemy, but he managed to fight back and escape. Tenma was very upset about this. Tenma's enemy was not upset that he was left without comrades, but I was surprised by this. Tenma experienced this feeling for the first time, definitely. By all means, Tenma must take the life of his opponent. The opponent took out a small jar with an unknown liquid and drank it. He said that everything didn't go according to plan, but now all the rewards will go to him, and it's definitely not bad. Tenma tightened his grip on his blade and tried to attack his opponent once more. This time, Tenma managed to do what she had started. He said that all his achievements are at a glance. The enemy did not expect such a quick attack. Tenma pounced on his opponent. His movements were sharp and fast. He was very strong, his eyes were filled with rage. The opponent did not expect that this guy could be so strong. Tenma didn't seem to notice anything around him except his enemy. He was angry at him and felt obliged to protect the villagers and his parents. Tenma was glad that the enemy had been defeated. Well, then the villagers called out to him, the guy turned around and looked at them. Celia ran up to the guy and asked if he was okay. Tenma was glad that they weren't hurt. Suddenly, Tenma heard strange noises and turning around, he saw his opponent. Tenma's enemy got to his feet, he looked like he wasn't injured at all and was ready to fight more. Tenma was running out of strength and he began to lose consciousness again. The villagers of his village ran up to the guy from behind and caught him. They were very surprised that the enemy was still alive. The enemy began to run towards Tenma. The villagers began to shout at him not to approach and also told him to protect Tenma. The guy warned that he was losing consciousness. Tenma opened his eyes and saw the walls of his house in front of him. He realized that he was wrapped in bandages and his whole body was hurting. When he got up, he saw that Slaylin and Suramaru were next to him. He was very glad to see them. Suddenly, the guy heard his mother's voice, there were tears in her eyes, she was very glad that her son had woken up. Also next to the guy were his father and grandfather, who were also very worried about him. 
Celia asked her son how he was feeling and if he was in pain. Ricardo told them to be very worried about his life. Tenmel was saved. At the moment when the enemy attacked the guy, his mother and father came to his aid and protected him. The enemy was defeated. All the villagers were worried about Tenma, Merlin asked if his grandson was okay. Tenma was unconscious, Celia was very worried, she said that he needed to be healed right away, tears welled up in her eyes. The guy was picked up and carried home. Merlin said he would be fine now. Ricardo turned to his father and said that he needed to see something. The grandfather turned to his son to look. Turning around, Merlin saw the defeated opponents in front of him. He was shocked by this. Merlin said that this man was just a devil, he was perplexed by what was happening. Ricardo said that's not what he meant at all. As it seemed earlier, the defeated opponent was still breathing. Ricardo said that an ordinary person would not have been able to survive after that. Merlin thought about it. He noticed that this man looked like a zombie, and I began to think about why this could happen. Ricardo said it was obviously the effect of the contents of that jar. Merlin said it was unlikely they would be able to find out anything from him. This is very interesting from the point of view of scientific research, but the safest thing to do is just get rid of it. After thinking it over, Ricardo agreed with his father. After examining all his enemies, Merlin said that the remaining two who participated in all this confessed that they decided to join the attack in order to take revenge on Ricardo. But the beast man and his companions needed Siromaru. Celia was sitting next to Tama and Shiromaru, who were tired after the fight. Ricardo said that their customer is a collector of stuffed rare animals. It is said that they were offered a large sum for the stuffed Siromaru. Merlin asked his son who the customer was. Grandfather put forward his assumption that it was an aristocrat. The villagers eavesdropping on their conversation became very tense. Ricardo confirmed his father's words. He clarified that as far as he knows, this is the eldest son of the Razak family. The villagers were very excited because the struggle with the aristocracy was coming and it would be very difficult. People could not believe that they would go against the eldest son of an aristocrat. One of the people said that he did not understand why everyone was so scared because he was not such an important person. The people were surprised by this response. Merlin asked if his father was their local feudal lord who owns the borderlands. One of the people asked if that was the case, maybe they should go get him. Someone said that a surprise attack would be just right. We need to make him answer for the attack on Tenma. People started quarreling. One of the people said that the collector had nothing to do with their local feudal lord. As far as they know, his family does not belong to politics at all. Merlin and Ricardo did not listen to the conversation any further. Ricardo said there would be a huge fuss if they involved their feudal lord in this. People continued to discuss this topic. Someone said that even if they take the life of an aristocrat, the main thing is not to leave direct evidence and then there will be no problems. People were shocked by such a proposal. They didn't know what to say to that. And after the incident, the history of one aristocratic family was erased from the mainland. Merlin came across a small jar used by their opponent. He said there was one more jar left. He wondered if this potion really turned people into zombies. The sage wondered who was selling these potions. He said he was trying to find out about it. Tenma took out a bone, telling Shiromer to start. The guy threw her, saying the apport command. Fenrir joyfully ran after the cherished bone. Two and a half years have passed since that moment. Tenma has upgraded all his skills. He had HP 13,000, muscle strength C, speed B, fortitude A+, plus, luck B, MP 21,000, protection C+, plus, magics plus, ability to develop SS. Today the forest was more lively than usual, the forest rustled. The guy started searching and closed his eyes, he saw a cluster of living objects. It was a group of orcs and not just ordinary orcs. There were people there and they were attacked. Tenma told Slaylin and Shiromar that it was bad and they needed to get into the bag. The actions of the orcs were too well organized. The man, agitated by everything that was happening, said that if this continued further, then they could. 
interrupting him, the guy shouted that he would help them and move towards them with incredible speed, scaring his comrades. It was a great chance to test his abilities. He took the stones in his hand, squeezed them hard, and then opened his palm so that they clinked. Tenma pushed the stones away from him, and they fell to the ground with a clatter, and Tenma shouted, Go golems! There was a flash and huge golems grew out of the stones, they began to fight with the orcs. The fighters who were surrounded were surprised by the unexpected appearance of the guy. Tenma summoned the magic of full recovery with a smug smile. The soldiers were surprised to notice that the wounds began to heal, it was just fine, Tenma was glad about it. He noticed a large orc and wanted to head towards it. It was the leader of the orcs. He was tall and muscular, with huge fangs that protruded from his mouth, a robe hung on his shoulders, and an axe was in his hand. Tenma noticed that when there is a leader in the cluster, the others become stronger, their performance increases by one rank. But he didn't really care. Tenma was confident in his abilities. The leader was right in front of Tenma. The orc swung at him, raised his axe and struck the ground. The guy managed to dodge the blow, while inflicting his own. The leader was defeated and fell to the ground with a crash. Everyone who stood on the battlefield was surprised by the outcome of the battle. The orcs looked at the startled leader, and they turned to flee. The fighters said in surprise, the orcs, and Tenma turned to the soldiers and smiled imperceptibly. The guy cast the spell, Earth and Spears, snapping his fingers at the same time. Thanks to this magic, he was able to defeat the remaining orcs. The guy exhaled with relief and put his hands on his hips. Then he was approached. It was a man dressed in rather expensive clothes, he was offering thanks for their rescue. After all, thanks to him, this battle was avoided without losses. Tenma felt embarrassed, and he denied it, and also decided to look at his characteristics, since he suspected that the man was rich. His name was Alex von Blumel Claston. he was 47 years old and his title was King of the Claston Lands. Tenma did not expect to see such an honorable man in front of him, he was shocked that the king was standing in front of him. The guy wondered what the king had forgotten in such a place. As soon as the fighters heard that it was the king, they bowed down before him. The order was given to lower the swords, the girl turned to the king, and he asked if she had heard his order. The girl apologized for the rudeness. He asked Tenma how he knew he was the king. The guy swallowed nervously, he couldn't just say that he had looked at his stats. He hesitated and found a way out, pointing to the coat of arms. Tenma had heard that only the royal family was allowed to use the coat of arms, which depicted a lion and a dragon at the same time. He also heard that the king of our lands is about the same age as him. The guy defended himself as best he could, but the king said that he could not be nervous, he saw that he had been taught well. Tenmo was glad that no one was hurt, and it was time for him to go. And in his mind, he wanted to retreat as soon as possible, since the king was annoying. The man stopped him, which the guy didn't like. He turned to the king and said that if he didn't come home early, mom would worry. But the man said that his mother would receive an explanation personally from the king. The girl turned to the king again because he puts their monk in an awkward position. He was asked to calm down. He agreed, it was time for them to introduce themselves. The king's name was Alex von Blumel Claston, and he runs this country. The chief chamberlain of the royal court was called Claif. Edgar, he thanked me for saving him. The monk is Jean J.B as well as Sigurd, who apologized for his previous rudeness, and Chris, who thanked him for his help and asked to recall the golems. The guy introduced himself and said that he lives in the village of Kukuri, which is located nearby. The king said they were on their way there. Tenma wondered why things had turned out this way, he was sitting next to the king in the carriage. The king said that recently, rumors that something was wrong in the forest of elders had leaked all the way to the capital. In addition, a planned inspection of the Margraves will be carried out in the near future, this should be done once every ten years. Therefore, the king felt that he would be able to calm the villagers if he came personally. In fact, Claif said, their king's mood changes very quickly, it was a spontaneous decision. 
Tenma asked if they didn't need to be informed of their arrival. The mere appearance of the king on the Margrave's lands imposes a huge responsibility on him. Therefore, the king decided that it would be much better to visit them with a small detachment. Claif said that the king is annoyed by the subordinates of the Margraves who must be present during such events. Everyone was confused by Clive's words. Tenma asked if the king could do that and was told that the king could do anything. Alex was already angry, he didn't say that. The king turned out to be still not collected, but he was more surprised that it turns out that in the old days, the king and his parents created a team of adventurers. They were very famous during their service, and it was rumored that they even hunted dragons. Then Tenma was called out, it was mom. She had asked him not to get into trouble. Celia was clearly displeased. The king tried to calm his mother down and tell her that he was their savior, but she just glared at him. The king fell silent, and Tenma thought that he was a useless king. Grandfather said that there was no need to scold him. After all, if he got involved in this on purpose, perfectly assessing his capabilities, then this decision can be considered a manifestation of bravery. And on the contrary, you need to praise him for it. Tenma was glad to see his grandfather. The king also noticed that they had not seen each other for a long time. Merlin confirmed it. Tenma wondered why the king was addressing him so politely. Previously, Merlin worked as a personal tutor for the king, in childhood his majesty was still a prankster, so many could not cope with him and quit. Clive continued because he could only listen carefully to Merlin's lessons. Tenma realized that he had a cool grandfather. The man said that he taught him the most effective ways to extract information as well as ways to skip classes, making everyone believe that he is studying hard and the like. Night fell. Alex asked when they managed to fix a child who was also so extraordinary. He asked what Clive thought about it. He replied that he was sure it would be dangerous to compete with him in a tournament for the opportunity to serve in the Royal Guard. Alex agreed approvingly. The king added that he would have sent him to the strongest royal detachment serving for the benefit of his majesty, or to his son's guard. If he wants it, of course. He also asked if there were any problems with him. Celia said it wasn't really their child. She was afraid that he would decide to run away from home if he found out that they were not his real parents. Ricardo began to calm Celia down. He apologized for not noticing that she was so worried about this. Alex didn't agree with what she was saying because she was undoubtedly his mother. Celia looked up in tears. The king said that this could be understood at first glance because when they scold him, he becomes sad and once praised, he immediately smiles happily. This is obviously because they are his parents. The next morning, his parents told him about the Tenmi guard, which surprised him. The king was sitting at the table and confirmed the words by saying that he was thinking about becoming a guardsman in his son's squad. The guy refused. Chris became indignant, he could not just go and join the elite guard, being at the same time a 12-year-old commoner. Edgar and Sigurd also began to be indignant, because at this rate in the future he would be able to take a position even higher, since when did it become so easy to get a noble title? The king missed all the objections and wanted to know the reason for the refusal. Tenma calmly replied that he was not attracted to the guard and most importantly, he would not be able to see his family. His parents were confused by his answer, but they were happy. Alex was sorry to lose such a unique fighter, but there was nothing he could do. But as planned, a study of the Forest of Elders will be conducted. They were in the Elder's Forest, there's nothing suspicious in these surroundings, but they've only been there for half an hour. The monk turned to Ricardo, was there really something so unusual here? My father replied that in the last few years, nine Class B monsters and two Class A magical beasts have been discovered here. Moreover, they were within 50 kilometers of the village. The king was surprised at how close it was. Alex asked what kind of magical beasts they were. Ricardo replied that they both died, but it was Fenrir, the king asked again, and said that it turns out that the Fenrir that Tenma tamed is their child. Ricardo agreed and said it was Siramaru. At that time, Celia was giving him a bone. Edgar began to list, the church and the village manager's house, 
and part of their house was used instead of a medical center. Ricardo confirmed, although they treat most diseases with magic, so no one uses the medical center. Edgar continued, the number of infected villagers increased, and at the same time, an increase in the number of monsters in the village area was noticed. Chris said that over the past four or five years, the number of cases has increased two, three times, and if we talk about monsters, there were several eyewitnesses who claimed that they saw goblins and slimes near the village. The king asked if these events were somehow related to each other, because most of the carriers of the disease often visited the forest of elders, and also many of them had direct contact with monsters during hunting. Based on this, they could believe that there is a high probability that something is wrong in the forest. They will connect a defensive detachment to enlist the support of the capital, conduct research, and take appropriate measures. The king thanked for the help provided and also thanked Ricardo and Merlin for their cooperation. The parents smiled and the entourage set off. Three months have passed, Tenma's joyful cry was heard in the village of Kukuri. He was calling for his mother he was able to collect a bunch of medicinal herbs. His mother praised him, saying it must have been difficult to pick so many. Tenma said it was easy for him. During this time, the defensive detachment established a shelter near the village, in addition soldiers and doctors from the capital arrived here. They were supposed to welcome the arrivals from the capital, but the residents of the village of Kukuri were not very happy about this event. One of the reasons for the discontent was that with their arrival, the place of gathering high-level medicinal herbs was fenced off and the entrance for the villagers was forbidden. But not all soldiers were faithful to their duty. Among them were young people who, in addition to the service, earned money by selling illegal herbs on the black market. Due to the fault of the soldiers, one of the sources of income of the village was no longer there and the supply of medicinal herbs was only decreasing, so the discontent of the inhabitants was quite justified. And therefore, thanks to his ability to use levitation magic, which allows him to travel huge distances in a short time, the duty of collecting medicinal herbs fell on his shoulders. Tenma said it was time to gather the ingredients for tonight's dinner. But two men stopped him after noticing that he had collected a lot of medicinal herbs. But the guy didn't listen to them, and they shouted after him to stop. One of the soldiers grabbed him by the shoulder. At the same time, the man said not to ignore him. Tenma grabbed his arm and threw him over his shoulder. The soldier slammed into the ground and stood up and said how he dared to do this. He had dealt with two soldiers, and now it was time to think about dinner. Tenma prepared a lot of things and called the guys to the table. Merlin noticed that he did his best this time, and Ricardo said that it looked delicious. The guy was pleased and said that he had collected a lot of Dioscaria roots this time and also caught a partridge. His father appreciated his batter, it was very tasty. Mom would never have thought that grated Dioscaria root would go so well with rice. Tenma was smiling, as was his whole family. There have been some changes in the village, but it's nothing. He has fun with his loved ones, surrounded by constant smiles. He thought that now and in the future, as long as he was in this world, happiness would continue. A month later, disaster struck the village. The harbingers of this disaster were zombie goblins. These were unusual zombies, they acted together, obviously, their actions were controlled by a higher level creature. According to the story of the soldier who followed the escaped zombie, he saw a whole crowd of zombies in the forest, at least a hundred monsters ready to approach the village within a few days. Immediately after that, a meeting was held between representatives of the village and the soldiers' detachment. It was decided to evacuate to the nearest city and expect support from the defensive detachment. The evacuation was scheduled for the next day, but the wagons disappeared. How could this happen? No one could figure out who caused this. The shelter was empty, no one. Someone suddenly shouted in my father's direction that it was bad. A whole crowd of zombies suddenly approached the village with terrible speed, overwhelming everyone with fear. Everyone was terrified of the proximity of the threat. Ricardo said that the soldiers had given them the wrong estimated time of their approach to the village in order to escape and use them as bait. He gave the order to hide in the shelter as soon as possible. 
someone suggested that it would be better to leave the village as soon as possible, to which he received an answer. That they had no wagons or provisions, Ricardo was not sure that children, women and the elderly would be able to safely reach the city in this scenario. They had no choice but to wait in the shelter. Merlin thought that everything would go well because he was here. They agreed with him, and besides, Celia and Ricardo were with them. Everyone hurried to the shelter. My father and grandfather realized that it would not be easy. Merlin remembered that according to the report of that soldier, about a hundred zombies were seen, and if we take into account the zombies hiding in the depths of the forest, then we should expect at least a thousand monsters. Grandpa said they should do it, Ricardo agreed. His father had given Tenma an assignment, he had to fly to the city where the soldiers were heading and deliver a message. Tenma wanted to object, because without him, it would be more difficult for them to fight the zombies. His father stopped him and said that with the help of levitation he could get to the city faster than the soldiers. He wanted Tenma to notify the guild of the current situation and asked for their help. He gave the guild card he had used before, if his son showed it, he should be listened to. Only he could do it, the father counted on his son. Tenma was puzzled, but decided to carry out the assignment. It was night outside, and the village was crawling with zombies. Darkness crept from the very depths of the forest. Ricardo gave orders to Celia and Merlin that as soon as he gave the signal, they were to spray fire magic on them and they could finish off the weakened monsters. My father ordered the use of fire magic. Merlin and Celia summoned a firestorm. A fire broke out. After a while, everyone was trying to catch their breath. My father was serious and tried to figure out if it was a lull. While they had time, they needed to refresh themselves, they had to at least regain some strength. By the way, they have almost no food and weapons left, and if there are as many of them next time, then things are bad. Tenma was flying and thought he had wasted too much time sending the guild a request for support. The sun would set soon, he was trying to get back to the village faster. Looking down from above, he saw a huge crowd of zombies, there were even more than one times. My father was on edge, Tenma called out to him, and he turned around and asked if everything was okay. The man asked if they could send support, and the guy said that everything was fine. However, they said that it would take them a whole day to get to their village. Tenma, with a happy face, said that on the way back he found the escaped soldiers and was able to take their belongings and food from them. He was praised. Now they will be able to stretch out. There was a roar of a crowd of zombies. There were a lot of them. Dragon snakes joined the orcs. They want to say that snakes can also become zombies. Tenma stood in front of the crowd and began to summon a firestorm. He summoned a huge storm of fire and added wind to it. Something happened that confused the guy. A column of fire headed in their direction, everyone was surprised. He turned his head and saw that the shelter had been destroyed. Tenma screamed, Mom was sitting next to Dad and trying to save him. Celia tried to apply healing magic while crying a lot. She turned to Tenma and said that his father had covered her with himself. The guy was in fear and disappointment, tears were dripping from his eyes, he stammered Dad. Suddenly, claws appeared out of the ground, the guy was trying to figure out what it was, and Merlin just said that it couldn't be. It was a zombie dragon. Merlin claims that, even among the dragon varieties, this monster of the highest level is an ancient dragon. This explains the cohesiveness of the actions of other zombies, and unfortunately, until they defeat the dragon, the zombies will continue to advance. In addition, during the entire battle with the creatures, everyone suffered terrible injuries. Merlin does not know how they will fight the dragon. With full concentration and using all his remaining strength, Otori Tenma desperately began to apply full recovery magic. Grandpa shouts at him not to do this because Tenma has used up a huge amount of strength using fire and wind magic. The boy is confused and does not understand why the blood does not stop in any way. His magic does not help to restore Ricardo's body. A rumble began behind them. This ancient zombie dragon is about to deliver a second powerful blow to humans. Nothing stops him. Grandpa and the boy turned around and saw it. 
They are in a critical situation. The guy doesn't know what to do, putting all his strength into dad's recovery. Merlin realized that the dragon was about to fire a second time. Ricardo asks the boy to stop doing this. He asks me to run away from here faster. The son does not understand why he is saying this. The young man tries to help to the last, he does not want to leave them. The guy starts to cry. He tries to reassure dad and himself, saying that everything is fine, there is very little left. Just a little more and Tenma, he hopes, will completely complete the healing. Mom thanks him for his help and says that she has had enough. The boy stopped. He doesn't understand why even mom says that. Dad says that's enough. They want their son to run away, but he flatly refuses to do so. He shouts to his parents that they've been coping somehow all this time. He can't and won't do that. Tears come to my eyes. The dragon was already ready to use its attack. His grandfather grabbed Tenma's shoulder and threw him back. Looking at their boy, Celia, Ricardo and Merlin asked Tenma not to stop and move on. The boy can't do anything and looks at his family for the last time. The zombie dragon activated its second attack towards the humans. Tenma sees her grandfather and mother sitting next to her father. The next moment, a powerful blow arrives at them, which explodes everything around them into splinters. He's losing his family for the second time. Tenmer raised his head and fixed his gaze on the place where his family was at the last moment. Only traces of the explosion remained. The guy has lost his desire to live. There was only emptiness in his eyes. He remembers all the happy moments with his parents and grandfather, who loved him with all their hearts. Lowering his head, Tenma gives up. The boy does not want to live, having lost what was dearest to him in this world. The young man says that he has no reason to stay alive anymore. He wants to meet his family as soon as possible. He hadn't finished speaking when a voice appeared. It was as if someone had shouted at him. He hears a voice asking him to move on. This is the request of Celia, Ricardo and Merlin, which they said at the last. Clenching his hand into a fist, the young man realized that it was his parents who gave him this life. He got to his feet, looking at his main enemy. Tenma will not allow the gift of life to be taken away so easily. The dragon roared angrily. The guy reduced the distance between him and the dragon to a critical one. The creature can easily grab him. But Tenma wasn't the least bit scared. The powerful creature hit him with its tail. The boy was not prepared for such a strong and unexpected blow. Due to the fact that the attack was unexpected, the boy was pushed away from the tail several kilometers from where he was standing. Looking at the huge zombie monster, Tenma sees that the creature is swallowing air with a whistle. It is preparing to deliver another powerful blow. From physical and mental pain and grief, the boy, looking at the beast, bit his lip and remembers his loving family. He screams that he must not die for anything. Gathering all his strength and might into a fist, the boy hit his fist on the ground with all his might, forming earthen columns. Without wasting a single second, the boy activates the maximum power air dissection. Approaching the creature, Tenma cuts the body into pieces, giving no chance of survival after that. Suddenly, the severed body parts began to connect together. After returning its body to its original state, the creature fixed its gaze on the boy. Tenmer rose into the air. In that case, he should just wipe the creature off the face of the earth so that not a trace remains. With the last of his strength, the young man activates a firestorm that covered the zombie dragon. Due to the high temperature and speed, the creature dissolves into particles. Seeing that the sworn enemy is no longer there, Tenma smiles. He won, he didn't let his parents' donated life be taken away. Remembering his family again, the guy says that the rotten lizard deserved it. He did his best for Celia, Ricardo and Merlin. But his strength ran out. He stops controlling his flight in the air, closes his eyes and his body relaxes. His body falls into a river that flows near the site of the battle. Immersed completely in the water, the river takes him somewhere ahead into the unknown distance, away from the damn place. Plunging into the depths, the boy still remains in his thoughts. The guy thought that his life was over. 
having sunk to the bottom, the boy hears a voice calling his name. Someone was actively trying to wake the young man up. When he opened his eyes, he saw the god of creation, who was calling his name. He looked at the boy, smiling. The god of creation announced that he would not be crucified for a long time because he had come to save the young man. If he doesn't help him, then obviously the boy will die. The boy was interested in his family. God sincerely regrets and apologizes to the boy for his inability to bring back to life those who have left this world. The Almighty reminds that the young man is still alive, and they decided that Tenma should not die. More precisely, they don't want him dead. Touching the head of the sobbing boy, the God of Creation asks him to live. Waking up on the shore in tears, Tenma realized that it was their wish too. He is distracted from his thoughts by the wet and slimy tongue that enveloped his cheek. It was Siromaru, and with him Slaylin, who had come for him. The boy hugging them was happy that they had come for him and his pets were in perfect order. Tenma heard a voice that distracted him from his thoughts. Someone said that his expression looks sad and causes a feeling of longing. The fish out of the water tells him that children shouldn't be so sad. The young man, bending down, asks if he is reborn. The creature gives an answer in agreement. He introduced himself, his name is Namataro. Namataro admits that this is the first time he has spoken to a human being. There was no such thing before his rebirth. Tenma responds in kind, saying that this is the first time she has talked to a fish. After telling about the incident, the fish realized that the boy was from the village of Kukiri. Tenma became sad again, once again thinking about the past. The boy was surprised that the fish knew something about what had happened in the village. The birds sang to the creature about it. Namataro said that after the leader of the zombies was defeated, the rest of the monsters immediately disappeared somewhere. The surviving villagers evacuated to another place. Tenma, Slaylin and Shiromaru listened to him attentively. It's hard to talk about it, the village of Kukiri is no more. There was no one and nothing left in that place, Namatero continued to tell us. This makes the young man even sadder. Namatero asked the boy what he was going to do next after that. The young man answered the question. He happily says that he would like to get to the nearest town or village first. At that moment, he was stroking Siramara. Namatero informed me that he had not asked about that, he is interested in how the guy is going to live on. The young man did not understand the question. Pisces says that it is written on the guy's face that he has lost a lot. He's worried about whether he'll be able to move forward. Tenma looks thoughtfully at her reflection in the water. Drooping for a while, the guy admits that he doesn't really know if it makes sense to go further. The only thing Tenma is 100% sure of is that he has to become stronger than he is now. The guy was serious. The boy stood up confidently. Tenma said that he would become stronger in order to protect what he holds dear and no longer lose what he loves. Tenma began to slowly come to his senses when he heard a familiar voice calling his name. He opened his eyes and three girls suddenly appeared in front of him, each of whom had animal ears. One of them is glad that the young man has finally woken up. They say they've been calling for him all this time. Tenma stretched and apologized. Smiling, the guy says that he had a dream about the past. One of the girls looks at him and sees that his friend is crying. He shouts nervously that this is not the case and looks like he just yawned. From this moment, a new chapter of life begins. The boy, thinking about his new friends and how they laugh together, feels a growing determination inside himself. He realizes that these people are his support and he is ready to protect them with all his might. Tenma feels confident and able to find her place in this new environment. The beginning of a new chapter of life with a beautiful sunny morning. The city of Gunjo, where Tenma is now located. The boy trains near the building where the dining room is equipped. As he wanted, he is doing everything to become stronger. Tenma Otori. He is 15 years old, he is the successor of a sage, a dragon slayer, a first-class adventurer, awarded by the gods. The man, holding a bouquet of flowers in his hands, says that he sees that the boy has been full of energy since the morning. Tenma wished good morning, and the man reminds me about breakfast. 
he will be waiting for the boy in the dining room. There is a cool drink on the table, a plate with salad, rolls, and the main course is scrambled eggs with bacon. After making a hamburger with bacon and egg, he wished everyone a pleasant appetite. Looking at his culinary creation, he is ready to pounce on food with all his greed. The woman turns to Tenma, saying that he has an unusual way of eating these foods. Taking bite after bite, the young man with his mouth full says that it is very tasty. After they said goodbye to Namataro, Tenma toured many towns and villages. He is currently staying at a hotel in Guns. He liked the locals and the scenery. The man, taking an empty plate from the table, tells the young man that he woke up earlier than usual today. He worries, thinking that something has happened. Tenma, greedily eating his hamburger, replies that he has decided to apply to join the guild. The man stopped when he heard the answer. He asked the boy why he decided to do it only now. Tenma says he had a lot to think about. The man wonders if the young man will take the tasks immediately. After finishing his breakfast, the guy said he would take it if he found something suitable. Thanking him for the meal, he called Slaylin and Siramara. The reason why Tenma decided to apply to join the guild is very simple he wants to become stronger and protect his friends and family. Siramaro is his riding pet. Many people look at this with surprise. Arriving at the guild headquarters of the city of Gunjo, the boy asks to wait for his pets near the building while he does business. Some unfamiliar guys came up to him, admiring Siramaru. The guy, entering the guild building, allows the kids to cuddle his pet. Tenma met his friends, who were waking him up near a tree then. From left to right Millie, Lily, and Nellie. They realized that their friend was going to join the guild. They immediately offered to do tasks together and invited him to join their team. The boy, who was covered with a wave of questions, reminded them that the girl always refuses quests but agrees to take the task if there is something suitable. These girls are C-rank adventurers. The sisters are Nico. They became attached to Tenma on the way to the city after saving them from an attack from two ogres. They were very surprised when Tenma, with a temporary registration, was able to cope with B-rank monsters. The young man was handed a statement. He was asked to write in this form all the data necessary for a speech to the guild. He needs to write his name, age, magical skills, family information, criminal records and the like. The boy decided not to write particularly powerful techniques in the form. The guy was given a guild card. He was asked to be careful not to lose her. In case of loss of the card, you will need to pay for the reissue. Tenma thanked the girl and took the card. Examining it, he noticed that he was immediately given a D-rank. Sisters Millie, Lily and Nelly jumped on him after learning that a friend started with this rank. They are incredibly happy for him. The young man was surprised because he only has a temporary registration. According to the rules, he had to start with the E rank. The girl explained to him that Tenma could easily deal with monsters of rank C and higher, the management decided to assign the guy a D rank. Lily pulls his hand, urging the boy to go and get the assignment for them as soon as possible. The girl is called by name, saying that the girls should join their team. They don't understand why they need a newbie. The other team says that Tenma is very weak compared to them. They say it will be dangerous to constantly patronize a novice. Millie, Lily and Nellie, making an indifferent look, refuse their offer. This is not the first time they have been asked to join another team. One of the members of the other team tells Lily to think better. He asks why they should carry a weak novice with them, he is of no use. Siramaru barks in displeasure, hearing nasty things about the owner. The same guy says that Tenma joined the girls for the sake of profit. The boy is like a leech. The young man is a little surprised by this description of himself. Lily, Millie and Nellie refuse to listen to some fools and ask Tenma not to listen to these nasty things. One of the sisters suggested the following task, the destruction of ferocious hogs, a C-rank quest. The task is to bring the carcasses of ferocious hogs. The boy thought about these monsters. To put it simply, ferocious hogs are something like giant boars. Nelly said that they trample the fields heavily, which causes huge damage to agriculture. 
Since Tenma has hunted these monsters more than once, the task seems appropriate. The Nico sisters agree to this, if the guy agrees too. They left the guild. Now Slaylin and Siromaru are coming with them. Since the decision has been made, it's time to pack up. The young man decided to take a magic potion, and just in case, an antidote. The girls collect provisions like water and some water as well as cookies. They asked if they had forgotten anything else. The young man, surprised that the sisters are gathering for the task, says that it would be nice to take a rope and a towel with him. The girls unanimously say they are hungry. One of the sisters offered to eat at a diner. The guy follows them. The guys, after trying different street food, they begin to say goodbye until the next day as agreed. As they left, the girls thank Tenma for seeing them off. They ask him to be careful on the way back. The tired guy returns back to the hotel. Around one corner, he is met by the very team that called him a burden. They say the boy was late. They waited until he was alone. The young man asked what they wanted from him, although he had noticed them a long time ago. One of the arrogant guys says that the conversation will not be difficult. He tells Tenma to just give them those three girls. They say it's too early for a boy to be interested in such a thing. Tenma reminded the team that they had been rejected. The guys don't care, they'll make them change their mind. As the tall guy said, these kitties just need to be properly disciplined. The lower brute laughed at this. The young man does not like this kind of conversation. The guys keep saying that the girls need to be punished and they will become obedient. When they get tired, they'll let the guy play with the cats, but for now they'll have to wait. The boy does not respond to these brazen statements. Using his abilities, Tenma suddenly approached the insolent man, putting his fist in front of his nose. Suddenly unclenching his fist, which made the insolent man flinch, Tenma asked him to repeat what the guy had said. He wanted to say something in a trembling voice. Grabbing this fearless guy, covered in cold sweat from fear, by the scruff of his neck, the young man asks to tell him what he was going to do with his friends. After doing what he had planned, the boy realized that he had overdone it a little. These guys really pissed him off. After that, the three of them didn't bother the guy anymore. At dawn, the Nico sisters wish the boy a good morning. They apologized for being late. Nellie complains Lily and Millie were not allowed to sleep all night, so they overslept. Lily says that's not the case because it was the other way around. The guy doesn't want to listen to this and reminds me that it's time to move out. Nellie asks how far away is the village they are heading to. Millie says if they're moving out now, they'll be there by evening. Ten must stop them by taking something out of his bag. He wants to show them something. The sisters are very interested. He took out an entire cart from his bag. All three girls were shocked, wondering where the whole thing came from. The boy laughs and apologizes for scaring him. He explains that he has a spatial bag. It has a spell that distorts space so almost anything can fit inside it. Slaylin and Siromaru appeared. They like to get into it too. Millie, Lily and Nellie thought that the young man did not take pets with him. Lily looked at Syro, asking if he would pull the cart. The girl didn't guess right. Something clicked in O Tenma's bag. He took out a huge cube, saying that they would use it. The sisters are very interested in what it is. Raising his hand, the young man uses his magic. He orders the golem to wake up. The mythical cube began to tinkle and crack. Instead of a geometric figure, a living golem horse appeared. The girls were very surprised by the appearance of this creature. They had never seen him before. The sisters are surprised even that the golem can move. Slaylin jumps towards this creature. The guy explains that the golem will move due to Slaylin controlling its movements with magic. Lily is thrilled that the creature looks like a real horse. Nelly is very interested in what Tenma called him. It's an artificial life form. The young man named him Tanakazi. They will use it to get to the village. That's the beginning of the adventure with the Nico girls. Lily shouts that they are about to be in the village. The sisters are surprised because they arrived much earlier than they thought. The girls asked Tenma why Tamakazi was moving. The young man does not know how to properly explain this to the girls. 
In fact, Tamakazi has a built-in magic core of one monster, or rather, a dragon, which the guy defeated that day. During the commotion, Slaylin managed to pick up a piece of the magic core. The young man did not expect this. It is not surprising that thanks to this core, a golem created only from dirt and stones has such power. The Nico sisters ask you to tell them about this secret. Of course, if someone finds out about this, they will certainly be very surprised. The boy concluded that it was better to just keep silent. He doesn't want to cause a fuss. Tenma says they are almost at the customer's house. They were met by an elderly man who thanks the team for taking his quest. The man's name is Banza. He is the village headman. About a week ago, several ferocious hogs began ravaging his crops. Every night they trample the beds and eat the vegetables growing on them. Tenma turned to Banza with a request to show the damaged beds. A man shows a field that has been damaged. There are still untouched vegetables on it, so Banza thinks that the ferocious hogs will show up that night. The boy asked for permission to look around here. The headman has given permission and is going to return to the office. He clarified where the team was going to be located. Tenmer replied that they would set up camp here and spend the night here. The headman said he was counting on them. When Banza left, the boy looked at his silhouette carefully. The guy realized that something was wrong here and carefully watched the man. The girl draws the attention of her friend. She pointed to the tracks of the ferocious hogs. There were more of them, and they are much more massive than expected. The Nico sisters say they definitely couldn't handle the ferocious beasts in threesomes. They are glad that Tenma went with them. The young man examines the tracks of the hogs. Millie turned to the boy, but he suggests changing their plan a little. The girls don't understand what he's talking about. The next moment, the girl laughs and, smiling, says that the young man can just burn them with a snap of his fingers. The guy thinks about it and looks at his sisters in silence. They are alarmed by their friend's behavior. The girls call out to Tenma with a question about what they will do. To begin with, the young man wants to create several more golems. Millie thought that the guy wanted to create creatures like Tanakazi, but no. He holds out his palm and asks the Nico sisters to give him one of their hair. The girls both shuddered and were embarrassed. Nelly says it's so unexpected. Lily agrees to everything, and Millie hopes that the hair will not be used for strange purposes. He repeated that he would create golems. The sisters were upset because they hoped for something else. The boy threw three fragments of the dragon core into the air and blew three hairs into the air. He tells those born of his magic to respond to his call. The young man created golems again. Their wagon is located next to their campsite. The four of them are sitting around the campfire and having dinner. The wood crackles. Tenma, finishing her meal, tells the girls that it's time and asks them if they're ready. It is clear that the sisters are worried. Getting to his feet after a hearty dinner, the boy says that they are acting according to plan. The girls answered him at the same time. A starry night. At the headman's house, the guy turns to the man, informing him that the adventurers have already moved out to bypass the fields. The headman understood his subordinate. The guy asks that it's time to move out and report on all this. The headman no longer looks like an elderly man. His appearance resembles a wild beast. As they agreed, the guy can be eliminated, and the girls are taken alive. The squad is watching the guys sitting on the ground next to the cart in the shadows. They're probably waiting for the beasts. The man informs his partner that there are two people outside. Most likely, the others were left waiting in the wagon. He calls them fools who really think they're hunting ferocious hogs. The guys do not suspect that they are being hunted now. The man reminds his subordinates that the guy can be eliminated. The guy replies that the girls need to be taken alive and unharmed. With a malicious smile, the man reports that female animal-like people are very appreciated in the forbidden market. It's hunting time and they've moved forward. People get closer from behind the girl. There are only three of them. One of them grabbed the girl so that she would not make a sound. While one is holding the girl, the other approached Tenma from behind, which he did not expect, and struck him a crushing blow in the chest with a sword. 
Suddenly, the young man hits the insolent man so that he flies back a few meters with a bang and a whistle. Lily suddenly grabbed the man's arm while he was confused and easily threw the man over her. He didn't even have time to understand anything because he was already flying somewhere to the side. Another accomplice shouts that there is absolutely no one in the cart. The partner asked his friend again because he did not hear the words. The accomplice wanted to repeat what he had said, which would have shocked his partners, but an arrow flew into his shoulder. The three sister girls stood behind and laughed at the scoundrels, saying that Tenma was right. They are acting according to the plan. A guy and three sisters were attacked. The young man asks just to give one hair each because of such a case. The girls, not understanding why, agreed only out of necessity. The boy threw three fragments of the dragon core into the air and blew three hairs into the air. He tells those born of his magic to respond to his call. This time, the young man created golems based on the magic stone, earth, and the girl's hair. They are formed by copying the information contained in the hair. In other words, the boy explains, he will copy not only the basic parameters of the sisters, but also their appearance, body size, and its features. Silhouettes of girls are formed from the ground. Millie and Nellie are stunned by what they saw, and Lily is also not left without emotions. Turning around, the young man saw exact copies of the girls created from the earth. He was so shocked that he choked. Millie's earthen golem stands with a bow, pulling the string on itself to shoot another arrow at the insolent man. The creature, releasing the arrow, accurately hits the neck of one of the opponents, they can't do anything against the speed. Nellie's golem catches up with one of the boss's henchmen at the speed of light, wielding a katana. There's a blade fight going on between them, but a version of Lily is running from behind the guy. He noticed her too late, as he was already pushed aside with one foot. The golem made him roll on the ground with his back. Real girls looking at this are amazed because the golems copy their movements exactly. Nellie is thrilled. Lily says that they reproduce not only their basic skills, but also combinations of skills. Turning around, Nellie wonders why there is a copy of Tenma in the distance. Standing with a blade in his back, he holds one of the bandits by the collar. It looks as threatening as possible. The boss stands in the light of the moon, realizing that complete silence has reigned in the beds. He thinks it's over there. He orders his subordinate, who is in the shadows, to go, check the situation, and report to him about it. The guy offers to do it to the boss himself. The man is annoyed by the insubordination. Turning around, he wanted to tell the guy to watch his tongue. But I didn't see my subordinate guy, but Tenma. He was speechless from this, not understanding why the boy was here. The man asked about the fools who probably lost. The boy asked who he meant. Continuing to speak, Tenma says that the subordinates who pretended to be villagers are lying right in front of the boss's feet. The boy asked the brazen bandit a question about where the real residents had gone and what he had done to them. The long-haired man does not want to receive information from the young man, believing that the kid is laughing at him. He doesn't believe that he was able to take them all down alone. The young man made a punch in the gut and repeats his question. He says that he immediately realized that the men in this village were not real villagers, including the headmen. A village without men will seem suspicious to visiting adventurers. The boy assumes that this is why the scoundrel forced his subordinates to change clothes. The bandit captured only young girls. The man, sitting on the ground, crouched in pain, at first does not answer the boy's question, but then mocks. He, imperceptibly taking a dagger from its sheath from his back, says that since the young man was able to notice all this and guess, he should also know where all the real inhabitants have gone. Suddenly holding his dagger in front of him, the scoundrel is going to stab the boy. He got rid of the residents, and he doesn't care about it. The young man, without twitching a single muscle on his back, did not get an answer to his question. He knows what happened to them, but he hoped for the best. The man wanted to strike. The dagger was covered in red liquid, but the hand was no longer in place, but on the ground nearby. The boy was able to chop off a limb with his hand, he did not even need a cold weapon for this. The man fell to the ground, bleeding profusely. 
Tenma does not give hope that the insolent man will get off with just that. He asks about the number of people the guy got rid of, but he whines that his arm hurts. With a fierce look, Tenma asks about the next body part that should be chopped off. He gives you a choice right hand or left foot. The boy asks the man if it is worth chopping him into as many pieces as he has killed so many people. The whole squad was tied up one at a time and gathered in one place. The girls are wondering what Tenma is going to do with them. Everything is simple. They will return to the city and hand them over to the guild. They will take care of the village women who were held hostage. Accordingly, the guys will need more wagons, and they decided to use the bandits' transport. The girls ask to prepare them. Several carts are returning back to the city. Nelly asks the boy about the moment when the guy realized that the task was a trap. He replied that it was probably when he saw the tracks of ferocious hogs. He immediately realized that they were not real. In fact, he just looked at the characteristics of the men who were in the village as soon as they arrived in it. The young man decided to keep silent about it. The Guild Building of Genjo City The squad returned back, bringing all the bandits to justice. Someone is calling out to the boy. Flut, the deputy head of the guild, hurriedly runs to him to find out if everything is all right with the squad. She was informed that the team was attacked during the quest. Tenma said she would tell you the details of the incident. The followers of Banza are a wanted criminal group. There is a huge reward for their capture. Flut said she couldn't even imagine that this group had captured an entire village and was hiding in it. The deputy head of the guild makes a bow to Tenma, saying that it is their fault. They haven't done enough investigations. The girl apologizes for dragging the team into all this. Someone calls out to the boy, calling him the man who dealt with the gang. This someone demands that the guy come to him immediately. The young man approached the tall men, posing as Tenma, the leader of the group that did this. The man asks what he is talking about. He reminds the young man that a false report is a serious crime, even if it is a child who reports. The boy says that this is not a lie, because the forces of all four people were united. The man shouts at him not to joke like that. He doubts that a small group consisting of a child and three girls is capable of neutralizing the Banza group, on whose trail they could not get out for a very long time. Someone is asking this tall guy to stop doing shameful things, they seem to have tensed up because of the voice they heard. The squad leader, a night girl, showed up. She tells them that men's behavior is not chivalrous, they should be ashamed of it. As soon as he arrived in the city, Tenma immediately reported to Mrs. Flut about the elimination of the Banza criminal group, which is on the state wanted list. After that, the guild contacted the knight's order and the boy was to be given a monetary reward. As soon as he came face to face with the knights who arrived for inspection, they decided to mock the young man, not believing that a child could cope with such a task. Tenma thinks this is unfair. The commander shouted for the knights to stop. Sweating profusely, all those who mocked made a bow and apologized at once. The Nico sisters look at the girl with interest. A knight approached the guy. She said her subordinates were being damn rude. The young man is glad that at least one adequate person has come. She introduced herself to the boy. Her name is Primra von Sanga. The girl is the commander of the knightly order of the City of Guns. The boy held out his hand for a handshake and introduced himself as Tenma, an adventurer. He offered to get back to business in order to hand over the captured bandits to the knights. Approaching the young man closer, Sanga carefully examines him saying that he was able to deal with this ill-fated group. After examining it carefully, she says that you can't judge people by their appearance alone. The young man thought he looked so weak. He asked the girl what she meant, but something rustled in his spatial bag. Sirumaru appeared, who wanted to smell and lick Von Sang's example. No one expected Fenrir to appear. The commander of the Knight's Order was stunned by what she saw. A huge dog was getting out of the bag. Tenma swears and orders to climb back in, but Shiro doesn't want to. The boy, stroking his pet, introduces the animal to the guys. Siramaru is fawning, he was very bored. Showing off the collar, Tenma explains that it is a pet Fenrir. 
there is evidence of his domestication on his neck. Prime Ravan Sang is still silent, but thinks that the child was able to tame an rank monster. The young man came closer and said that Siramaru is very affectionate and is not dangerous to people at all. He invited the girl to pet him. The subordinates of the night girl shout that it is dangerous, assuming this is an attempt to incite the commander against the monster. Tenma, stroking the animal's fur, says that Shiro is very soft, which strongly attracts attention. As if hypnotized, she reaches out to touch Fenrir's fur. She almost succumbs to temptation in front of her eyes, but suddenly she comes to her senses. There are guys behind her who are dejected by what is happening. She cleared her throat and said that the verification of information, as well as the transfer of criminals into their hands, was over. The reward will be given as soon as the guild hands it over to them. It may take several days. The dog is disappointed that it was not played with. The commander said they were coming back. Von Sang's example is thinking about the words that Fenrir is very soft, and Tenma, looking after him, understood the commander's weak point. The boy is in the guild building. He was given a new adventurer's card. Now Tenma rank is S. Mrs. Flut congratulates the boy on his promotion. The girl reported to the top of the guild about the capture of Banza. As expected, they agreed to a rank upgrade. To put it in essence, the authorities could have promoted the young man to be rank. Tenma gratefully accepts the promotion. The boy was about to leave. Turning towards the exit, he accidentally noticed a special mission on the board. Taking the task sheet, he says that a request has been received to eliminate the winged monsters. The so-called stone birds. Their plumage is as strong as a stone and their wingspan exceeds 3 meters. They use high-level levitation magic, so the task is of increased difficulty. The boy noticed that the amount of remuneration was not specified in this request. Flut slowed him down a bit, saying that this was not really the case. The young man will need to remove more than one individual. Naively hoping for the best, Tenma thought that two birds would need to be destroyed. Mrs. Flut disappointed him by saying that the boy was not quite right. Birds live in flocks. The girl said that, fortunately, due to the fact that the birds live in mountains remote from human settlements, there was no damage from them. However, the guild cannot leave everything as it is. The amount of the reward depends on the number of monsters destroyed. It would be even better if the squad brought the extracted resources. Flut hopes that Tenma will take up the case if his hands are free. The boy understood the request of the mistress and accepted the request. The young man arrived at the mountains on Tanakazi. People leaving there turned around in incomprehension to look at Tenma. Placing his palm on the ground, Tenma searches for the creatures he needs. He does it with magic. Through the foliage of trees, branches and bushes, through rocks and a chasm, the young man feels the approach of birds. There are a considerable number of them. Approaching them, Tenma waited for the birds to land on the surface. One of the stone birds discovered the enemy, which she shouted to the others. The young man is as confident as possible in himself. Watching the monsters from behind cover, the young man made a pistol with his right hand. He activated the air projectile. One by one, the birds fell down. Tenma hit the bullseye and thought about aiming for the head. The air projectile left only holes in the stone birds. The young man realized that he was defeating monsters without much effort. Humming a song, Tenma jumps, collecting resources. Some people were waiting for him, hiding behind a shelter. Most likely, they were waiting for the boy to deal with the creatures. Standing in front of the prey, Tenma says that he hunted well. A pile of stone creature carcasses lay in front of his feet. Durable wings can be sold as raw materials to create weapons and armor. To his luck, the young man was able to get a bunch of eggs. Also, these birds have delicious meat, so for dinner he decided to make a semblance of oyakodon in the style of this world. Oyakodon is a traditional Japanese dish. Tenma was hailed by someone. Several guys came up to him. One notices that the young man has extracted a lot of resources from these stone creatures. He continued to talk about it, assuming that it would be difficult for the boy to carry all the resources and offered to share with them. 
Standing in a stance of pride and greatness, the guy said to put all the loot here, but Tenma doesn't care. The boy thinks that he will cook egg sandwiches with chicken cutlet for breakfast. The boy, after thinking about it, remembered that he had not cooked sukiyaki from bird meat for a long time. Sukiyaki is a Japanese dish from the category of nebmono dishes. While Tenma is dancing with happiness, those guys who wanted to rob him can be seen behind him. They were tied up, and on the forehead of one of them, there was a piece of paper with an inscription that they were thieves beaten by a man they wanted to rob. Tenma returned to the guild of Gunjo City. They handed him a bag of money, praising him for his good work. It was his reward. The boy's mouth dropped open in surprise. He thought it was too much, but Miss Flutz said that the amount includes the reward for the last time. While they were talking, Prime Ravan Sang entered the room with her night squad. Tenmer recognized her and greeted her. The girl thanked for the work done, which the boy did the other day. Flutz said that Mrs. Sin Primera came here to bring a reward to the young man. Tenma now understood what was going on. The doors to the guild building opened with a shout to be waited for. These were the thieves that the young man had tied up when he was gathering his resources. The head of the gang asks the boy what he really thought he could deal with them to the end. This insolent man shouts to the guild staff that Tenma stole their raw materials, which they received from the destruction of stone birds. Flut plays along, surprised by this. The young man hopes that she is doing this on purpose, but the girl slowed him down, saying that this often happens. Addressing the three impudents, she asks them to tell them how they were able to defeat these feathered monsters. Putting his hand on his heart, the head of the gang lies that he did it with a bow. Wanting to get this sorted out quickly, he hurries the employee to give them their reward. Flut reports that not a single puncture wound was found on the bodies of the stone birds. She asks the scoundrels to demonstrate the magic technique with which they shot at birds. Straining from the situation in which the guy is clearly losing, he asks why he is suspected of something. The thief says that his parents come from an honorable family. They are familiar with the very Prince of Sang. Prime Ravan Sang heard this. She was with her squad behind this liar and turned to him. Turning around, the insolent man asked who else she was. Her face became stern. She told this thief that her name was Prime Ravan Sang. The girl is the third daughter of the very prince whom the guy just mentioned. The whole gang, who wanted to easily fuck money, was stunned, mouth agape in surprise. The impudent man asks the example that he really thinks that an attempt to lie about his origin and mentioning her father's name will get away with it. The commander of the night squad ordered his subordinates to take him away. The girl is listened to and obeyed by her. The brazen liars wanted to explain themselves, but they were quickly silenced. The girl approached Tenma and apologized for such a misunderstanding. She promised that her people would deal with him. The boy said that everything was fine. The commander helped him out a lot. Siramaru leaned out of the youth's spatial bag. He smelled the scent of the girl he met last time. Her eyes lit up, and she was all lit up with happiness. She reached out to him, remembering the description of Fenrir's soft fur. Almost touching the pet's nose, one of the subordinates bursts into the building, saying that it's time to return, otherwise the delay will disrupt subsequent plans. She flinched in fright. She apologized, quickly turned around and began hurriedly walking away to her squad. The boy thanked her again. At this point, Prime Ravon Sanga is upset that she couldn't pet Siramara. With a tired and worried face, Tenma looks at something and says that he finally managed to do it. He, covered in sweat from exertion, says that for the first time since he was reborn in this world, he could. The boy made pudding. It wasn't easy without a refrigerator, but he managed to cope. This is a guy who mastered the magic of freezing for the sake of making pudding. While the young man was enjoying his creation, the hostess of the hotel came. She saw that he had cooked something from eggs and called it unusual. Tenma suggested they try it. He still has a lot of eggs left from the stone birds. A man and a woman look at the pudding in surprise, not understanding what it is. The woman decided to try a piece. The boy was thinking that now he would be able to cook donuts and pancakes. 
The man laughs, saying that his wife will get fat again. The hostess tasted dessert, Tenmer remembered that he could also cook pancakes, and the husband stands with a bump on his head for his words. The young man came to the guild building. The employee greeted him. The boy came for an errand. Before taking on a new assignment, the young man says that he brought the employees something in a package. They are surprised. Tenma cooked too much, so he decided to treat the employees. Looking into the bag, they ask what it is. The sweetness that the young man brought is called a donut. The girls say they've never seen anything like it. They decided to have a tea party. Approaching the task board, the boy saw that there was an assignment to eliminate several individuals of crocodile sharks. Just like last time, the reward depends on the number of monsters destroyed. He likes this kind of assignment. After thinking for a while, Tenma turned to leave the building. Since these are water monsters, you will need to prepare. He decided to go shopping for this. As he was leaving, the boy felt a piercing look at his back. He feels three people standing behind him. It was Millie, Lily, and Nellie saying their friend hadn't shared the donuts with them. The young man had completely forgotten about it. The girls are very upset. As a result, Tenma had to devote the whole day to cooking sweets. The boy thought about the fact that sweets and women should not be underestimated. The next day, the young man arrived at the place where crocodile sharks live. The place of residence is a lake. Siramaru was with the young man. While on the shore, Tenma touched the water to search for monsters with his magic. After a while, the target was discovered. It was a powerful aquatic creature quite dangerous for humans. After spending some time, everything necessary was ready. A sturdy chain and a healthy hook. As a prophet, Tenma attached the meat of a stone bird. Suddenly, the young man thought about it. Will the monsters fall for this prophet? This does not stop him, because he does not intend to stop empty-handed. He threw the hook into the water. His artificial fishing rod began to twitch. The crocodile shark took the bait and pulls the chain to the depth. The boy feels that the monster is quite strong and hopes that everything will go well. He gripped the chain tighter. And activating the magic, he applied a shock wave, which went through a chain reaction along the entire length, which caused a crocodile shark to appear on the surface. One is ready, but the young man feels that somewhere in the distance he saw the outlines of another one. The young man thought that the monster had managed to swim away when he saw how he defeated his brother. He wanted to find it by searching. Suddenly, the boy had a bad feeling, and he turned towards Siramaru, who was eating a fish he had caught. A crocodile shark jumped out of the water, intending to devour an innocent dog. Tenma was seriously scared because the monster was so close. He calls out to Shiro, but trouble is too close. With one swing, Fenrir was able to chop the damn crocodile shark apart. Shiramaru looks harsh and cruel. Looking at Siramaru, he sees that he is grinning and growling, continuing to hold the fish. It turned out that Fenrir was defending himself because of the prey he had caught. Tenmer returned to the city after completing the task. People look around, observing that the white dog and the child are covered in blood from head to heels. He exhaled, saying that he would have to return to the hotel faster than planned. He needs to clean up Siramara. While the boy is walking into the guild building, someone behind him calls out to the young man in a trembling voice. Tenma turned to his name. It was the example of Von Sang, who looks at the young man and Fenrir with fright. She thought something had happened to them. Tenma asks with a smile what the girl is doing here, but she said that she should be the one asking about it. She was informed that someone had seen a boy and a monster in the city, bloodied from head to toe. The young man was covered in sweat, realizing that he had been denounced. He explained to the commander of the knight's order that the quest had gone a little wrong, but no one was injured and everything was fine. The girl noticed that Siramaro's white fur was now covered in blood. Fenrir stands with the skeleton of a fish in his teeth. Tenma reports that he planned to bathe Shiro at the hotel. He could use a bath himself. After these words, she flew closer to the guy, asking for help. The young man was embarrassed by this. He misunderstood her. She offered to help with Siromaru's washing. 
they are staying at the hotel. Tenma apologizes for forcing the commander of the Night Order to do such dirty work. The girl, dressed in the clothes of a young man, enthusiastically says that it is her job to solve issues related to reports. Wielding a brush, she wants to make Siramaru's fur become fluffy and snow white again. Still, she wants to stroke him. The boy, standing with a bucket of water, looks at the example, considering it good-natured even despite the time-consuming service. To rinse the animal, Tenma splashed a bucket of water into the shiro. He suddenly began to shake off the moisture. Primra and Tenma did not expect this. They were splashed with water. After spending some time in the bathroom, the young man comes out and thinks that he took a lot of the girl's time. He would never have thought that Lady Primra would help him clean up Siramara. The boy wants to thank her somehow. Next time, he'll make donuts for her. Out of the corner of his eye, the young man noticed something. In the living room, Tenma saw the commander of the Knight Order of Prime Ravan Sang playing with Shiro, enjoying how fluffy Fenrir was. Hotel. The boy is resting after a difficult day. The man, thinking that Tenma is awake, shouts that a guest has come to him. The young man is very annoyed by the habit of waking him up in the morning. Waking up, the guy is sitting in bed. The rays of the sun embrace him. He doesn't understand who needs him so early. A man met him from the stairs and tells him that you can't tell from him that he is such a devourer of girls' hearts. Pointing at the guest, the man says that he would never have believed the boy that he could win the heart of such a beauty. The commander of the Knight's Order of Prime Ravan Sang came to the hotel for the young man. She was waiting for the guy to come. He greeted her. The girl started in surprise. Primra apologized if she woke him up, but the boy said that everything was fine. He thought something had happened, but no. I would really like to ask him something. Looking into her eyes and putting her hand on her chest, the girl asks to meet her father. The boy blushed at what he heard, and the owners of the hotel are looking forward to something interesting after hearing about meeting their parents. There was a deathly silence between everyone. The situation is a bit awkward and Tenma showed with his expression that he would like to clarify her request. It dawned on me that she had expressed herself incorrectly. She realized the whole situation and blushed. Stuttering, the girl screams that she didn't mean anything like that. That's not what they all thought. An example led Tenmu to a tall building. So huge that the boy sees the roof only by fully raising his head. Looking around the room, the young man concludes that this is a huge mansion, as befits an aristocratic family. A voice distracted the boy from his thoughts. A dark silhouette on the stairs was approaching them. The young man asked who it was step by step. The man greets him. He introduced himself as Arsus von Sang. He is the father of examples. The boy introduced himself as Tenma, an adventurer. He says it's a great honor for him to meet him. The young man does not believe his eyes. The guy is surprised that the father of the examples is so handsome and majestic. Arsus apologized for calling the boy at such an early hour. Tenma tells him that the man looks so young that he has already mistaken him for Mrs. Pus Primera's older brother. My father laughs and says that he is almost 50. His friends began to suspect that he was an elf. The young man is still in shock. Arsus started talking about his daughter. He worries that when his daughter invited the boy to them, did she say anything superfluous that could mislead people? Primera blushed because of the situation at the hotel. Over a cup of tea, Arsus returned to the reason why he had called Tenma here. He asked if he remembered a guy named Giz. This is the guy who made a fuss when the boy was on a monster elimination mission. After this description, the young man remembered him. Smiling, remembering what happened, the guy offered to tell us about it in more detail, but it won't be necessary. Arsus is already fully aware of the situation. For the fact that guys made a mess and even hiding behind an aristocratic surname, he will have to stand trial. The boy was already happy about this turn of events, but Arsus had to tell him not the most pleasant news. His father, the baronet, does not agree with this and believes that it is not his son who should be judged, but Tenma. The baronet's father believes that his son has been vilely slandered, and anyway he couldn't lose to a child. 
You can't believe the words of a coward. The young man raised his head, realizing what he was saying. Lowering his head back, the boy just laughed. Arsis von Senga noticed this. The surprised boy's face became as stern as possible. Since the baronet thinks so, the boy is not going to hide or retreat. Arsis was silent for a while, looking at his interlocutor. After these words of the young man, a smirk appeared on his face. The father of the example is very surprised that the boy is not even afraid of the fact that the Giza family are aristocrats. Tenma tells Arsis not to think that the young man looks down on the aristocracy, and he himself reflected on the fact that he was directly acquainted with the king himself. Then Primer cut into the conversation, saying that Guy's belongs to an aristocratic family. It is obvious that his relatives will not want to appear in a bad light in front of everyone. Arsis von Sanga says that his ducal powers include the opportunity to condemn Tenma, but in this case he cannot avoid a wave of discontent. However, as unfortunate as it may sound, he has such power. If you make even one wrong move, it will cause a stir. Arsis rubs his chin at such a mishap. After stopping rubbing his face, Arsis raised his head and addressed the boy. He returned to the topic he had started with the reason why he had called Tenma. Mr. Duke was visited by a man who came to find out about the situation. He asked if there was any news. Arsis von Senga, in all his grace, says that it is really Baronet Regil himself who decided to come to his mansion. He's glad to see him. The same father of the insolent guys came to him. The man asks the Duke about the decision on the case with the sneaky boy. Arsis reports that, unfortunately, their conversation took a disappointing turn. The young man said that he did not agree with the baronet's position and would not back down so easily. Giza's father is furious, he doesn't understand what this means. To him, Tenma is just a worthless adventurer. Baronet Regil offends the duke by asking that he really believed the boy's words. Duke Arsis replies to the guest that the boy is supported by the guild. He clarifies the baronet's confidence in the correctness of the decision. Is a man ready to go against the guild without having a plan of retreat? Besides, the baronet naively believed that Arsis von Sanga would not interfere. Baronet Regil drooped a little and asked the duke about the plan. Arsis said with a smile on his face that there would be a duel. In ten days, representatives of the two sides will fight a duel. The one who wins will be right. The duke says the kid will fight on his own. Taking out a roll of paper, Arsis von Sanger reports that the boy himself confirmed this by signing a written oath. Baronet Regil reads the paper. This is a judicial oath, which says that on such and such a day of such and such a month, the winner will be determined at the end of the duel. Whatever the outcome of the duel, the defeated person loses the right to object to the winner. After carefully examining and reading the paper, the baronet realized that the duke had thought everything out. He informs that in this case, he will personally search for a representative of his side, not forgetting to clarify the permission from the duke. The guest says that since everything has been resolved, then let Arsis allow him to take his leave. In his mind he thinks about Tenma, so that he does not dare to underestimate the power of the aristocracy. Arsis von Sanga looks after the departing baronet Regil and smiles. Everything is going according to plan. He will make the boy show everything he is capable of. A few days later, the city of guns suddenly became lively. People discussed the duel, believing that the aristocrats will win. It so happened that the news of the duel spread throughout the city. There are also rumors that the boy has great strength. Tenmer returns to the hotel after completing the assignment. It all seems suspicious to him. He doesn't know where the information leaked from because he didn't tell anyone about it. The boy came to the guild building of the city of Gunjo. It's full of people who are carefully examining the task board. Tenma sees an announcement that a duel will take place this month between the representative of the Regil Baronet and the adventurer Tenma. This made the young man a little angry. The example of Von Sang apologizes to the young man. My father said it would be an interesting sight, so he asked me to hang it up. She didn't think it would attract so much attention. It turns out that this is the work of the father of examples.
he remembered the Duke's words that if they fought in front of a large number of people, the baronet would not be able to challenge the boy's victory in any way. Tenma considers Duke to be a bug who loves to do things his own way and finds entertainment in it. The girl is worried that something has happened to the boy. No matter how you look at it, these are aristocrats who can bring anyone to win. Tenma listens attentively to the commander of the knight's order, who asks him to be careful. Clenching his hand into a fist, he said that he understood her and promised to be as careful as possible. He mentally says that he will be as careful as possible so as not to blow everything to hell here. Tenma was called by name by someone. It was Nellie, Lily and Millie who found out that a friend was going to have a duel. They promised to come to support him. Millie said they would take some more food with them. The young man asks not to bother so much. Mrs. Flett caught up with him from behind, putting her hand on his shoulder, which made Tenma flinch. She asks them to beat them on behalf of the entire guild, to show everything they are capable of. The young man was stunned by the sudden appearance of an employee of the guild. The boy laughs, saying that everyone has decided to make a great event out of this, when suddenly he hears who someone is betting on. In this duel, the one who defeats the opponent first will remain right. The man behind the counter shouts that there will be a one-on-one -on -one fight between the adventurer Tenma and the representative of the Regil Baronet, a rare sight. The young man sees that people have even started betting. One bets a hundred gold pieces on the guild and the other bets on the guy from the big hole. There are only a few days left before the duel between Tenma and the representative of the Baronet Regil. The day before the duel. The boy looks attentively at the board, which shows the betting coefficient. Tenma 5-8 and the representative of the baronet 1-1. One, one. one of the people says that it makes no sense to bet with such coefficients, someone asks to bet on Tenma, and another says that it will be only losses. The young man thought about his coefficient. Suddenly, he thought that this was a good opportunity to earn pocket money. The boy asked the man behind the counter if he could put the money on himself. He replied that it was possible, it was impossible only to attack the enemy. Tenma bet the man a whole bag of 10,000 gold, betting on himself. The people behind him were stunned by such an act. Walking along the forest roads, the young man grumbles aloud that he is now being held for a fool. Passing by the bushes, he noticed a silhouette. Without saying it out loud, but assessing it with his eyes, the boy concluded that someone was watching him. It is obvious that this is a mercenary of Baronet Regil. Tenma came to the headquarters of the knightly order. Mrs. Uwe Prime Ravon Sang meets her friend good-naturedly. He came to thank the girl for her help. In gratitude, the boy wants to treat them all with donuts, sweets from a distant country. Prime Ravon Sang looks at the young man and says that since he has come, why not have tea together? They were just about to take a break. The girl noticed that the boy wanted to talk to her about something else. He told her that someone was spying on him. For example, this is a worrying sign. It's not great for public safety at all. The girl will put a guard on Tenma. The boy thanked her, but that was what he expected, as from the commander of a knight squad. She says that until she makes sure the young man is safe, he will stay here for a while. Stuttering, the young man agreed but thought that he was overloading this example. Subordinates came to the commander who talk about this or that message or the task set for today. Tenma, apologetically, cut into the conversation. He offered to help, believing that there was some kind of job for him. It is inconvenient for a young man to sit in one place with his hands folded. The girl had been cleaning the armory since the morning. Tenma reminded me that it was already evening, Primer says that there are no results and, shamefully admitting, she is bad at cleaning. The boy examines all the weapons in the warehouse. They look luxurious and expensive. The girl said that mostly decommissioned swords and blades are stored in this room. Turning around, the young man asked about the decommissioned swords, he did not understand why they were decommissioned. Primer, beaming with joy, says that the sword is blunted. After looking at a slight hitch on the blade, Tenma, shouting, says that the sword can still be used. He says the sword can be sharpened because it's not even broken. She asked what it meant to sharpen, but the young man is indignant at this question. 
footsteps sounded behind them. They were joined by Commander Santos, Simon Ada, and General Allen of the Knightly Order. A man in big armor apologizes if he distracts from work. The girl, who was pricked like a needle, jumped up and made a welcoming and honorable gesture paying tribute to General Allen. Drawing attention to the boy, Allen says that he heard that they were visited by an adventurer who set the whole city on its ears. Holding out his hand for a handshake, the general says that he has heard a lot about him. The people in the city say that the boy is confident of his victory. The man says that he has achieved a lot for his age. General Allen says that Tenma has not chosen the best opponent for himself. As a veteran of his field, he wants to say only one thing. For aristocrats, the most important thing is not to tarnish the honor of their family, and many are willing to make any sacrifice for this. Unfortunately for the boy, his opponent is just one of those. In other words, General Allen explains, Baronet Regill will try to get rid of the boy by any means possible. The man had heard that the aristocrat had hired an a rank adventurer. He asks the young man to give up without hesitation if he suddenly feels danger. The Order of Knights would not like to lose such a promising adventurer. The commander of the third squad, Simon, turns to the commander of the first squad, Santos, with a question about his opinion about this boy. He replies that Tenma is not bad, but still a child. Even judging by his achievements, the boy is below their rank. The commanders of the knightly order believe that it would be wiser to abandon this duel. They decided to ask their general's opinion. Allen says that although he advised the boy to give up, he has a feeling that the young man is hiding his real strength. Ada says that the general is right and Tenma will not give up the duel and will not give up. The commanders are wondering why on earth she is so confident in the adventurer. She was curious. Not so long ago, she noticed him in the city. Ada is sure that he did not recognize her because of her knightly appearance. As soon as he came into her field of vision, the girl immediately realized that it was him. Ada had heard rumors about the boy. There was talk around the city that a child had appeared who turned out to be a capable adventurer. She couldn't contain her curiosity and decided to check it out. Ada directed a fleeting glance at him, full of murderous intent. If he notices her, then the rumors will be true. In that case, he should return that look to her. But in response, instead of the same look, a polite greeting came. Ada says that in an instant he showed her his real strength. Tenma is strong and, the girl suggests, perhaps the strongest of the knightly order. The really strong don't talk much. The strongest duelist will be determined today. It was the day of the fight between Tenma and the representative of the Regil Baronet. The Nico sisters came to the event to support their friend. The young man had heard that this stadium holds 5,000 people, but from afar it seems that the whole city of Gunst has gathered for this duel, because absolutely everything is packed. Adventurer Tenmu was asked to go to the center. There was a man there, and a table next to him. The man handed him a paper and asked him to sign it, having previously read it. Scribbling with a pen on paper, the young man raised his eyes to see who was in front of him. It was a young man who started yawning out of boredom. Having stopped signing the paper, Tenma straightened up and greeted Max San, asking that for some reason he had become a notary. The man looks as apathetic as ever. Max Belkiap. Terran, 41 years old. He is the head of a branch of the guild as well as an a rank adventurer. The head of the guild, who collects signatures from both sides, asked the next one to come to the center baronet Regil. The boy noticed that the man was not alone. He is followed by a whole crowd consisting of men and women. Tenma looks at it silently, realizing that this crowd is here for a reason. Max Belkiap was a little tense from the number of people who came with the baronet. The head of the guild branch asked the second representative to sign the papers in the same way. After collecting the signatures, Max collects all the documents. He turned to the baronet and informed him that the match was about to start, so his guards should leave the stadium. Mentally, Max considers this aristocrat a pain in the ass. With a sly grin, Baronet Regil says that these are not his guards. He asked Max to take a closer look at the match restrictions. 
nowhere has it been precisely formulated that in the confrontation, one representative comes out from each side. In other words, he means that they are the representatives of the Regilla team. All the participants in the battle threw off their black robes at once. Among them were Joshua Makina, Remai and Rire, Sean, Ake and Monica. All of them are opponents of Tenma. Max laughs, saying that Baronet Regil has messed up everything again. The young man calms him down, saying that everything is fine. Looking at the horde of people ready to kill the boy, Tenma replies that he expected something like this. He doesn't think their prank goes against the rules. The boy asks to start the battle. Being on the sidelines, the leader of this battle announces to everyone that the fight between Tenma and Baronet Regil begins. The arrogant man turns to the young man, saying that he will make him regret that he dared to treat the aristocracy with disdain. He didn't have time to finish because a stream of air rushed past him, and a scream was heard behind him. Tenma said out loud that the first one was ready. The crowd was stunned and whispers began to be heard in the stadium. The young man easily slammed one of his opponents into the wall. The enraged aristocrat shouted to his henchmen to attack, all the participants in the battle rushed forward at the same time. Joining forces, we set ourselves up for a powerful attack. They simultaneously sent a powerful explosion at the young man. Millie, Lily and Nellie are very worried about their friend, while the baronet and his son Giz smile maliciously, anticipating an easy victory. The scattered dust showed the boy. He was unharmed. There were huge arms around him. The crowd is buzzing with surprise. Tenma created the golem's arm with the help of a magical zombie dragon core. Dispelling magic of this level was no problem. Winking and raising his index finger, the young man says that in addition, you can use the golem's hand not only for protection. All the participants in the battle raised their heads up. There was a massive explosion. The crowd is alarmed, worried about the aristocrat and the rest of the people. Guys almost burst into tears. The dust is dispersed. A pit has been formed in the center of the arena. Everyone, including the baronet, was sitting on the floor, having lost hope of life. The boy says that he could have killed everyone with this blow, but decided to restrain himself. There was nothing to underestimate him. All the henchmen of Baronet Regil ran away, calling Tenma a monster. He lured them in with tales of easy money. They don't want to come down here. Turning to the side of his head, he saw a man. The main star comes on stage. Tenma knew that he was the one who was watching him. The guy raised both hands, saying they were giving up. He tells the young man that during the surveillance, he hid more carefully in blind spots than those who did it before him. He knew that Tenma would notice it. Walking towards the boy, the guy says that he will not defeat him head on. The young man concluded that he did not want this. Thinking about it, the guy wanted to try, but no. He walks past the boy, wishing him luck. Turning to the baronet, the young man says that he is the only one left, practically alone. Tenma offered if he wanted to take care of his son as well. The boy asked his remaining opponent what he would do. Guys is afraid, and the baronet, clenching his teeth in anger, says that he has lost. The host of this spectacular fight shouts that the winner of the match is Tenma. It was an unconditional victory. Mrs. T. Flut raises a cup to Tenma Sans victory. Everyone happily bumped into each other, after which they drank. People congratulate the adventurer on his victory. After looking at the large number of people, Tenma turned his head in the other direction and saw his father. He says that the boy is very popular. The young man laughs and says that everyone just wanted to hoot. The handsome man smiles, answering that there is no need to be modest. He tells the young man that everyone here rejoices at his victory as if it were their own, so they love him. The man wants Tenma to understand this. And also, those who bet on the young man are happy about it. For example, Flut and Max Belkiap, who giggle in private. As he leaves, his father says that today's banquet is at his expense. The boy wanted to object, but the man shows a ticket for a bet of 100,000 gold. Serna Sun says that everything is fine now. Even she had hoped to continue living. All the residents of the town, their kindness, saved her. 
Prime Ravon Sang flew up to the young man, congratulating him on his victory. She says it was a great sight. She also informed me about the baronet and guys. They opposed the notary and then in an official duel in front of everyone. By their dastardly actions they defamed the name of the aristocracy. The baronet was stripped of his title and his property was confiscated. They are also going to be given as servants. For example, he personally thinks that they deserve a more severe punishment. The young man did not complain about them, but another person intervened in their conversation, saying that he was telling the truth. Usually, the death penalty is imposed for such offenses. The guy who left the arena said that the baronet and guys remained alive thanks to the kindness of the duke and the absence of complaints from the boy. Primera, taking out her sword, shouts that this guy is from the Regilla squad, but he tries to stop her, asking her to listen to him first. It turned out that the guy was a spy. He was Duke Sang's subordinate from the very beginning. The guy was supposed to become an informant, infiltrate the enemy's ranks. The girl is outraged that her father did not tell her about it. Tenma studies the guy. This is stale, he's 29 years old. Ranks, scout killer, pretty strong. The boy says that he is not as simple as he seems. From behind, the boy was attacked by the Nico sisters. They asked the young man what his plans were for the future. The girls want to throw another party. After a while, sitting on a chair, he apologizes to everyone. The young man said that he would leave the city in the near future. The Nico sisters are nervous, not understanding why Tenma is abandoning everyone. They want to leave with him. The girls agree to everything. The boy says he's going to attack the dungeon. The example of Von Seng and the Nico sisters are shocked. The father asked why he needed it. Clenching his hand into a fist, Tenma says that the dungeon is a man's romance and everyone is striving for it. Tenma arrived at the Gunst City Library. From the shelves filled with piles of books, he took a thick volume to study. It describes labyrinths and underground labyrinths. The underground labyrinth is located around a powerful cluster of magical power, the core of the dungeon. There is no core in a simple maze. It is located in places where magic accumulate. Studying all the material, the young man realized that that forest belongs to one of these species. He has a job that he definitely wants to finish. The boy thinks that perhaps storming the dungeon is a necessary condition. Tenma seeks to solve the mystery of the ancient forest that attacked the village of Kukiri. Mrs. Flut noticed that the young man was already leaving. Siramaru is cajoling next to her. The Nico sisters hung on Tenma, urging her not to go anywhere. They're demanding that he come back. The girls will be waiting for him, and Millie will also be waiting for him to marry her. Tenma remembered something and left his friend's recipes for donuts and pudding. The boy asked his father to treat the others sometimes. The young man turned to Mrs. Flut, thanking her for everything. He became a real adventurer only thanks to the Guns Guild. The employee says that this is only his merit. They are all on his side, and if anything happens, she asks to contact them. All the people who came to say goodbye to Tenma say that they are all for him and will be happy to welcome him at any time. This touched the boy, and he let out a tear. Waving goodbye to everyone, the young man went to the headquarters of the knightly order of Kim Von Sang. Tenma says that he is leaving the city and came to say goodbye to her. She asks him to stay a little longer. The young man was embarrassed by this behavior. Primera asks to leave at least Siramara, promising to take care of him. The commanders-in-chief and the general come to them. Apologizing for the intrusion, the general says that they have been waiting for him. Tenma thanked them for agreeing to accompany him. A handsome man squeezes Siramara, and Ada says that Primera is grateful to him too. The young man was able to eliminate one unpleasant aristocrat. They say they are grateful to him because they have suffered a lot with the baronet. Putting his hand on the boy's shoulder, the general says that this was the official part. The squad has a request for him before he leaves the city. Pulling out their swords, the general says that they definitely want to fight Tenma in a duel. They were all inspired by the valiant performance in the arena. Throwing a wooden sword to the young man, he asked him to consider it a training match. 
Grabbing a stick, Tenma warned everyone just in case. If he was fighting, he was fighting for real. The commanders are sitting, there are no forces left. One of them says that the boy has a real talent, and they are far from this level. They watch Tenma fight on equal terms with the general. They deftly and powerfully parry and attack each other, as if this is a life and death duel. They stopped fighting. The general says that everything happened as he expected. The boy said that he was very close to victory. With a smile on his face, the man says that it was naive to believe that the young man could be defeated in fencing. Looking at his subordinate knights, General Allen suggests someone else to challenge. The boy tensed up after that. Primra Von Sang held out her hand. She wants to try if the young man is not tired. The girl is determined to win. Primra Von Sang lost in a duel to a young man. Sitting on the ground, she thanked him. Tenma praised her for her good work, but said it would be good for her to add feints. He explained to her that her attacks were too monotonous. Primera acts according to her character honestly and straightforwardly, so she is easy to defeat. He likes that about her. Primera was very embarrassed by these words. The girl turned to the boy, saying that she wanted to fight him again someday. Taking his hands, she asks him to return to guns without fail. The wheels of the cart creak. Tenmi is surprised and surprised to feel this. He's got a place to go back to. The capital of the Seije dungeon. The girl hands the boy a guild card. Tenma is a C-rank adventurer. The girl also asked for permission to enter. She noticed that the traveler looked as tired as possible. She asked him what happened. Tenma explained that everything was fine, but a lot had happened on the road. Flut's map turned out to be incorrect, and Slaylin was swept away by the river. Killer bees were chasing them in the forest, as well as robbers. She informed him that he could contact the dungeon reception about the dungeon. Tenma thanked her and walked on. After walking a little further, the young man saw the entrance to the dungeon. There was a guard at the entrance. After providing the documents, the boy was allowed inside. He entered the reception area of the dungeon. There is a blackboard on the wall. The young man is surprised that a group can be assembled here and many other things. He turned to the girl. Tenma informs me that he would like to enter the dungeon. The girl realized that the guy was here for the first time. She said that first you need to make an entrance fee of 1000 gold and then read the user agreement and sign it. After signing all the papers, the girl recommends taking the card that she showed to the young man for a raid into the dungeon. She explains to Tenma that this is a special map that will allow you to move freely through the dungeon. The employee says that there is a space in the dungeon with an exit to the outside. This card can remember the place where the adventurer came from, then instantly transfer the person from the entrance to the dungeon to that place. She also said that the formalities were over and said where the entrance was. Beaming with joy, Tenma wants to come in right now, but without preparation it can be dangerous. First, he wants to go to the local guild to find out the details. Guided by the map of the capital, the boy found the headquarters of the Seijie Guild. Someone called out to Tegma from behind. They were local drunks who said that there was no place for kids here and told him to go home. Tenma taunts them. He was wrong. Such personalities will be found everywhere. The drunks grabbed him by the shoulder, asking him what he was laughing at. Taking out his knife and putting it to the drunkard's neck, the boy, despite the enemies, advises the men to change their minds at the time. Two people were sitting at a table not far from the guild headquarters, watching the young man. They thought he was great. Approaching the reception, Tenma says that he needs information about the dungeon. The girl says that there is a map up to the 10th level, and there is also information about magical creatures living in the dungeon. He was given a thin but large book in his hands. Tenma noticed that everything was described in quite detail. As expected, the deeper the level, the stronger the monster. There won't be any problems until the tenth level anyway. So the boy found out everything. Now he needs to find a place to sleep before it gets dark. The hotels report that there are no available rooms. The boy remembered that this is a popular city among adventurers. He calms himself down, thinking that there are a lot of hotels, so you don't have to worry. 
After a while, sitting on some roof, the young man realizes that there is not a single room available in any hotel. There were no places in the hotels and Tenma was thinking about the fact that he would have to set up camp. A girl crashed into the guy's back. He informed her that she had scared him. The girl asked for forgiveness. The girl asked if everything was okay, to which Tenma said that it was his fault. She reported her clumsiness and the guy was already helping her up. He tried to justify everything by thinking and not looking around. Suddenly, there was an angry shout from the men. They recognized Tenma and remembered that he did not respect them. The men were not cold-minded and tried to call him over. He pushed the girl and ordered her to leave. The big guy said that the guy was too smug, and he, in turn, was an adventurer of the C rank. The man even tried to insult the guy, but Tenma didn't care. The guy sat down next to the girl, asking if everything was okay. The girl reported that she was in pain. The man was already bursting with anger, he continued to address Tenma and demanded respect for his elders. The big guy had already started swinging. Suddenly, a man appeared who immobilized the adventurer. He was surprised. The man who appeared said to stop. Tenma turned his attention to the man and realized that it was Jin Jido. Tenma decided not to waste time and scan the man who appeared. This was Jin Jido, aged 32, with the title of honorary baronet and a first-class adventurer. The guy noticed that the fighter was stronger than his dad had once been. He pushed his thoughts away because he wasn't up to it right now. The girl was pointing at her knee, she had skinned it. Tenma used his healing magic, and the wound healed quickly. Jin was hailed. The girl was unhappy that he was hanging out here because they were looking for him everywhere. The man apologized and Tenma continued to study everyone. They were in the guild. He realized that they were all top-notch adventurers and they were also a great group. The guy was just addressed by name. He didn't understand how they knew about him. Lena cheerfully replied that they knew because he was the guy of the example Chan. The rumors spread quickly. Tenma was taken aback and said in a scared voice that he was not her boyfriend. They don't have that kind of relationship. The guy asked in surprise if they knew her. He was told that they knew everyone in the Gunjo Knightly Order and had recently been there as well as seen his duel. Tenma remembered that he had not thanked him for his help and bowed his head and did so. Everyone started to introduce themselves and said that if there were any problems contact them because they would be in this city. Jin thought about the fact that he didn't help Tenma, but rather those men. After all, if he hadn't intervened, they would never have stood up. Manas wondered how strong he is, and Jin thought that maybe even stronger than him. After all, back in Gunjo, he did not fight at full strength, he did not feel a powerful aura. A girl named Amy thanked Tenma for walking her out and the guy in turn thought that he was the one who got her into trouble and asked for forgiveness, and he also wanted to ask her something. He was looking for a place to stay and wanted to check with Amy if he was anywhere nearby. He couldn't find it. Amy asked again, and she said that her house is a hotel. Tenma did not notice this. The girl said that she would now clarify about the room. The guy was already praying for a room because this is his last chance. So much had happened today and all he wanted was to spend the night under a roof. He instantly became serious as soon as Amy showed up. There was a room in the hotel and he could check in. He thanked everything he could because there is nothing better than a warm bed. A fresh morning in a fantastic world. The main character leaves his house, locking the door. Tenma starts doing morning stretching. He yawns because he hasn't woken up yet. Tenma says that he slept well and there is nothing better than sleeping in bed. Amy meets him at the door, holding a box of food in her hands. She is glad to see Tenma. Amy and Tenma greet each other affably. They start down the stairs. Amy cheerfully asks Tenma if he had a good rest. The young man replies with satisfaction that his vacation went well. Tenma notices that the building where he spent the night has a staircase outside, which is a very unusual phenomenon for him. Amy replies that maybe it is, but in Seijay it is a common thing. 
Tenma thought that the architecture of this building was similar to residential buildings from the past world. Amy asks the hero with a smile if he is going to go to the dungeon today. Tenma gives a positive answer. Amy hands the hero a box of food. She adds that she cooked it in gratitude for yesterday. This action surprised Tenma slightly. Amy confusedly says that this is a lunch for the road. She hopes that Tenma will like it to taste. The hero thanks Amy with a smile for the gift. Amy instructs the young man to be careful and runs away in confusion. He says he gave her trouble. After a while, Tenma finds herself in front of the entrance to the dungeon. There are many boxes in the main hall of the dungeon. The young man notices a mysterious door and shows interest in the contents behind it. Tenma confidently opens the door in front of her. The contents behind the door greatly surprise the hero. He saw that behind the door there was a small room with large doors and two guards near it. Tenma decided that in order to go further, he would have to show them the guild map. The guards open the door for the young man. Behind the door there is a corridor dotted with columns that leads to the stairs down. Tenma comes down the stairs. To his surprise, there is another door at the bottom, but this time it is not guarded by guards. He stood in front of the door in disbelief. He stretched out his hand to the door and it swung open. He realized that it was a magic lock. Because of him, low-level monsters won't even be able to touch the door. Finally, Tenma entered the dungeon itself. The hero summoned his familiars. Siramaru and Slaylin graduated from the hip bag to the hero. Tenma confidently decided to go further into the dungeon. The hero looked suspiciously behind him. The footsteps of monsters were heard in the rear of the hero. A grin formed on his wolf's face. A bunch of monsters were standing behind the hero. Tenma noticed with boredom that there was a whole crowd of monsters behind him. He assumed that this was a novice initiation. Tenma thought about it and looked at the dog. The young man suggested that he use his skill gained after the battle with the crocodile shark, which would help him with training for one thing. Tenma took a confident stance in front of the monsters. He said it would be a formidable weapon in real combat, but in the meantime they could practice on the enemies. At this time, someone in the Adventurer's Guild is addressing Jin. Jin and Tenma's other companions stand in front of the task sign. Jin was asked how far Tenma would be able to walk on the first day. Jin replies that ordinary beginners, having assembled a team, at best pass the first level. The girl clarified with him that we are not talking about an ordinary beginner. Jin added that Tenma might be able to pass the 10th level. The girl notices that he highly appreciates Tenma's skills. Jin adds that all the monsters there are low level, but even if you get used to their number, not everything can work out well. One of the adventurers awkwardly reports that for the first time she was able to reach only the third level. Jin thoughtfully replies that Tenma can handle it. At this time, Shiromaru is furiously destroying monsters in the dungeon. Tenma happily watches the actions of her subordinate. He praises Siramara and asks what level they are at. Tenma notices that there are even insect monsters on the floor. Saline starts shaking on the hero's shoulder. Tenma notices this and worries about his condition. Shiramaru runs up to Tenma. He is very tired and because of this, the hero offers everyone a rest. The guys choose a safe cul-de-sac as a place to relax. In order to further secure his squad, Tenma decided to build a wall of earth with the help of magic. This way they can rest without being afraid of monsters. Tenma happily remembers that you have a lunch with you from Amy. He opens a gift box with food. There are a lot of mouth-watering goodies inside the box. Tenma began to eat the lunch Amy had made. When he finished, he realized that the wind was blowing at his back. Tenma turned suspiciously towards the wind. The hero stood up and realized that the wind could not blow in his shelter due to the fact that it was a sealed space. He decided to go to one of the walls, after that the young man noticed a strange marking on the floor. When Tenma got closer to the marking, the area of the floor that was limited by it began to fall down. A secret tunnel was formed at the site of the marking. Tenma and the company looked inside the secret tunnel, it turned out to be quite deep. The hero looked at the find with interest. After that he ordered Siramar and Slaylin to temporarily get back into the bag. Tenma confidently decided to explore the passage. He rushed into an unknown dark area. Being in free fall, the hero realized that this tunnel is very deep. It turned out that the opening leads to a lighted room and landed on the floor. Tenma was in a large room. The exit from the room was visible in front of him. The exit itself was blocked by a large dark statue. It was a dragon statue. The hero was surprised that the statue was twitching and crumbling. He realized with horror that it was not just a statue, but a dragon-shaped golem. The dragon twirled its tail and struck at Tenma. The hero clumsily dodged the blow. He was very surprised that the golem began to attack him. Tenma has successfully conjured an air veil. The attack had no effect on the golem. Tenma realized that the dragon-like monster had absorbed his attack. 
he decided to analyze the dragon to identify its weaknesses. Then he realized that the dragon has an anti-magic coating, which means that the hero will have to tinker to win. Tenma said that he had something special in store for such an occasion. The hero took out Kagurasimaru's sword. It was an original Japanese zombie dragon bone sword. Tenma prepared for battle. He did not forget about the body strengthening magic. The dragon attacked the hero. Tenma blocked the golem's attack with his sword. The young man struck back at the monster. At the same time, he noticed that his sword had cracked. This greatly surprised the young man, because this sword is much stronger than the others. The golem cracked and broke into pieces. A strange object was visible from the wreckage. Tenma turned his attention to this object and decided to come closer. Approaching the wreckage, Tenma noticed that there was an egg in the wreckage. The egg struck fear into the hero. He did not understand what this egg was made of, since even his sword pierced it. The egg began to crack. After a couple of seconds, the egg completely broke. He noticed that there was something inside the egg. A strange white creature crawled out of this egg. It was a baby dragon. Tenma was walking through the dungeon. There was a small white dragon lying on the hero's head, which apparently became very attached to him. He can't believe it was really a dragon. This dragon was the source of energy for that dragon-shaped statue that he found in the dungeon. Or rather, he was its core. The dragon sat on Tenma's arm. Tenma looked at him dejectedly and gently scratched the neck of his little animal. The hero assumed that the dragon reacted to the magical energy hidden in it. The hero decided to analyze his new pet. Tenma was convinced that it was indeed a dragon. The young man understood that he could not leave the cub alone in this place. Then the hero began to collect mana around himself, which attracted the attention of the dragon. Tenma decided that he would name the dragon Solomon. He told his new pet that he was now officially his pet. The dragon and Tenma happily pressed their foreheads to each other. Tenma continued on his way and put the dragon back on his head. He wanted to know what his statue was made of. Obviously, this is not a simple statue. Since even Kagurasumaru cracked, he decided to take a piece of the golem with him for research. Tenma decided it was time for them to return to the surface. His attention was attracted by the passage in the wall from which the light was coming. He suggested that this might be the secret level. Tenma took out a hyper card, he decided to save his location with it. The hero threw up a card, and it instantly lit up, which greatly surprised the hero. The hyper card returned to Tenma's hands, he was discouraged by how quickly it ended. A moment later, he was already standing outside the dungeon. Tenma turned around and noticed that he had returned to the entrance of the dungeon. He felt a strange feeling in his chest, it was the first time for him. Jin was standing behind the hero, who immediately called out to him at the sight of Tenma. Tenma turned towards the guys and greeted them. Jin and the company asked when the young man came out of the dungeon. Two extremely joyful adventurers hugged Tenma from both sides. One of them asked what he had achieved on the first day, and the other asked what level he had been able to reach. He told the guys that he had reached the twelfth level. With his words, he surprised the adventurers surrounding him. The adventurers said with annoyance that they had all lost. The girl next to him asked in perplexity how it was possible to go down so deep for the first time. One of the adventurers noticed a dragon on Tenma's head. Tenma looked at his pet sitting on his head. After a while, the guys came to the cafe. Tenma told the adventurers that he met a pet at the 12th level and took him into the team. He also added that the dragon's name is Solomon. One of the adventurers noticed the pet's name. He remembered that the king of the ancient legends was also called. He grinned and said it was an appropriate name for a dragon and added that Tenma had good taste. Tenma was discouraged by the statement of an acquaintance. Tenma verbally agreed with the adventurer's statement, but in fact the hero named the pet after his favorite game from the past world Solo and Mon. Jin started to tell his thought to Tenma, but was interrupted by a joyful adventurer, saying that she had a request for the hero. His words interested the girls. The adventurer coquettishly asked if Tenma would be able to fulfill the request of the cute girl. Her words confused the young man. Tenma was very surprised that the girl asked him for sweets. He questioned the adventurer's intentions. The adventurer confirmed her words and said that she would like Tenma to prepare sweets, delicacies that even the aristocrats of the capital have not seen. The girl crossed her arms together and happily turned to Tenma. She told the great pastry chef, the creator of goodies she didn't know about, that she wanted to taste sweets she hadn't even seen so much that she couldn't even sleep. The girl asked if his sweets were that good. The adventurer next to her added with a grin that it was just sweets. Another adventurer added that he also wanted to be sure to try them, because it would be interesting. Confused, Monas asked her friends not to forget about her. A girl with a sweet tooth turned to Tenma, asking her to make sweets for three. 
Manas, confused, shouted at the girl to stop because she did not refuse sweets. Tenma calmly listened to the group. Sweets will have to be cooked for four. After a while, Tenma returns to the hotel and a friend shouts at him at the entrance to the building. It was Amy. She was glad to see Tenma. She praised him for coming back from the mission quickly. She offered to take over his luggage. Tenma was also glad to meet him, and there was a smile on his face. The young man replied that Amy's lunch was very tasty and thanked her for the food. Amy said, confused, that she was glad. A dragon was sitting on Tenma's head, and the animal was watching Amy. Amy turned her attention to the animal. Impatiently, she asked Tenma what was on his head. The young man noticed with a smile that the dragon immediately catches the eye. Tenma told Amy that this was his new friend whom he met in the dungeon. He named the dragon. Amy's eyes shone, she called him a cutie. After a while, they found themselves in the girl's kitchen. Tenma apologized for taking over their kitchen so suddenly. Amy replied that it was nothing and asked the hero what he was going to cook, and at the same time got him an apron. Tenma exhaled wearily and replied that he was just going to make sweets. She asked him for permission to help him with the cooking. Tenma replied that he would not mind her help if it was not a burden to her. Amy's first instruction was to break several eggs of rock birds. Amy reached for one of the eggs. As soon as the girl's fingers touched the egg, it immediately cracked, which greatly surprised Amy. A moment later, a chicken hatched from the egg, which surprised the girl even more. The hatch chick puzzled Tenma. He didn't understand how they were able to hatch, because he kept them safe in a magic bag. Amy was happily holding two chicks in her arms. After that, Tenma decisively checked Amy and the birds. After checking, he noticed something unusual about Amy and turned to the girl. He asked the girl to call one of the parents, which greatly puzzled the girl. After a while, he, Amy and her mom were sitting in the living room. The girl's mother asked Tenma what was wrong with her daughter. Amy was a little confused. Tenma replied to the woman that her daughter Amy has the ability to train animals. His words puzzled his mother, and he asked Tenma about the training. The young man added that, in other words, Amy can make monsters her allies. The girl listened to the guy with interest. Tenma told the girl's mother that she had recently touched the eggs of a rock bird and chicks had hatched from them. He added that this is an extremely rare phenomenon that occurs when protein matter and monistic waves come into contact. He sees this for the second time. Tenma added that he is a tamer himself and therefore he simply cannot pass by. He wanted to ask Amy something. The girl continued to listen to the young man in fascination. Tenma asked if the girl wanted to learn how to fully control her power. His words surprised Amy. Tenma added with a serious face that it was a very profitable, but at the same time dangerous ability, and if she wanted, he could teach her the basics. He also added that how she will use her power in the future depends only on her. Tenma added that this power would not be able to protect her from all the dangers on the adventurer's path. Tenma continued that if she was ready to make a move, she could become even stronger. The girl's mother drew attention to the future danger to her daughter. Tenma clarified that Amy's ability itself is not dangerous, but different things can happen if you give up. He also said that this ability would be able to protect its owner and his family, such as his own. Tenma was happily sitting surrounded by his pets and petting them. He said that these guys had helped him out more than once and now they had become a real family for him. Amy stated that she would like to try. Her words surprised her mother. The girl added that now she is responsible for these chicks. She asked Tenma to take care of her daughter. Amy's mother asked confusedly about the reward and its value. The woman's words surprised the young man. The hero didn't even think about money when he offered Amy his help. An idea came to him. Tenma happily offered Amy to cook his meals as a tuition fee. There are a lot of different sweets on the table. The adventurer with a sweet tooth was holding a piece of cake on a fork with excessive pleasure. She looked at the sweets happily and said it was some kind of miracle. She confusedly added that Tenma's sweets are very tasty and melt in her mouth. She even feels sorry to eat them. Another adventurer also plucked up the courage and decided to try Tenma's treats. The taste of the cake prepared by the young man amazed the adventurer. He told the hero that these are ideal sensations. There is a measure of sweetness and sourness in this cheesecake. The adventurer ate the cake with gusto. He added that Tenma is simply excellent at making sweets. He is a real talent in this business. At this time, Manas and an adventurer with a sweet tooth were fighting over the donut of the ladder. The adventurer turned sharply in Jin's direction and asked him where Tenma himself had gone. Manas and his friend continued to quarrel over an undivided donut. The adventurer recalled Manas her saying that there is nothing special about sweets. Jin replied to the adventurer that Tenma was planning some kind of training with her student outside. 
Amy and Tenno were standing in front of a bucket filled with water. The young man asked Amy to closely monitor his actions. They were accompanied by Tenma's pets. The young man put his hand in the water, and the water began to boil and sway. A moment later, water splashed out of the bucket. This surprised Amy a lot. Tenma looked into the water and told Amy that this was the first step in using magic, in the same way she would be able to apply magic power to her future wards. Tenma added that after she learns how to do this, a magical bond will be established between them. He continued by saying that a relationship of submission would be established between Amy and her rock birds. Amy listened attentively to the young man. The girl asked Tenma if she would become a tamer after that. The hero confirmed her words and added that then she would become a tamer of the first level. Tenma added by telling the girl that with each training session they will be able to perform more precise commands and even commands that require endurance. With the growth of the magical power of the owner, his pets also become stronger. A loud voice came from behind Tenma, addressing Tenma. This scream confused the young man and scared his pets. Amy's father came up to her and put his arm around her shoulders. He asked Tenma, displeased, why he was teaching his daughter strange things. He embarrassed the girl with his behavior. Tenma became interested in the rumors about him. Siramaru and Slaylan got angry at the adventurer and started making angry noises. Amy's father looked at the animals in horror and clarified that Tenma was inciting magical creatures. He considered the young man a real villain. The father began to forcibly take the girl away with him, simultaneously instructing Amy not to mess with Tenma. The girl tried to resist her father's actions and asked him to stop taking her away from the young man. Tenma asked Amy's father what kind of rumors he had heard. The man said that in the city from which the adventurer came, he humiliated a respected man, and also severely punished all those who opposed his will. Tenma bribed his supporters. Tenma was greatly surprised by his words. He furiously asked who was spreading all this slander. Amy's father and Tenma turned their gaze towards the adventurers who came out of the dining room. The girl's parents said that Jin had told him everything, and he had surprised Jin with his own words. The man's words startled the group of adventurers, especially Jin. He was at a loss and did not understand what kind of slander he was talking about. After a while, everything was resolved. Amy bowed to Tenma in confusion and apologized for her father's rudeness. Tenma told her that nothing terrible had happened. Tenma said with a smile on his face that Amy's father was just worried about her because he was just a good parent. He gave Salmon and Siramar cookies. This made the animals happy. Amy added touchily that her father should have dealt with the situation first. Tenma replied that when he was just learning magic, his parents were often angry with him. He added that he could understand Amy's father. Tenma's words touched Amy. Siramaru and Salmon asked Tenma for more cookies, to which the latter refused. Amy ran up to Tenma in love. She told the young man that he looked very grown up, that he was kind and calm. Tenma was embarrassed and asked Amy to stop saying such things. Amy added that Tenma is not much older than her, but he looks much older. Her words confused Tenma. Amy shyly suggested that she and Tenma could handle any kind of exercise. The guy's training was interrupted by the loud chirping of birds. Amy said she was going to buy some bird food as soon as possible. Tenma asked, confused, why she needed to buy food. The chicks continued to chirp. Tenma smiled and said that he would go down himself and quickly catch some food. His words puzzled Amy. She wanted to object, but Tenma told her to rest while he did the feeding. Before the girl could come to her senses, Tenma was already gone. Thirty minutes later, Tenma returned to the girl. Amy turned her attention to him. She asked Tenma where he went to get food. Tenma flippantly replied that he had followed him to the dungeon. Amy was very surprised by his words and clarified with the young man that he went to the dungeon to get food for birds. Tenma gave a positive response and added that he had found some goodies for the chicks. He had a bag in his hands. Tenma quite took out a large caterpillar from his bag and asked Amy how she liked his find. Amy was amazed by Tenma's discovery. The hero continued by saying that insects are the best food for birds. The caterpillar in his hand was actively twitching. Tenma said that if they are cooked properly, they will be suitable even for human food. He recommends insects of the cricket family. They are better than all the others to replenish the protein supply during the journey. Tenma added that spider, like monsters, are also delicious, but the most popular are shell-shaped insects. Insect food was also found in the previous world, even from famous chefs. He added that he added all this information just like that, so he might not remember it. At the same time, he crushed the caterpillar in his hands with his hands. Amy fainted. Tenma rushed to her aid with a piece of caterpillar in his hands. The adventurers nearby were also worried about the girl's condition. 
The adventurers looked in horror at the crushed beetle in Tenma's hands. They asked what kind of abomination he had in his hands. Tenma asked if they wanted to taste the caterpillar. The adventurers gave a sharp negative response. Tenma happily stated that adventurers should not be afraid, because this caterpillar can be eaten raw. The adventurers replied that this was not the case at all. Amy thought to herself that in this scenario, she might not be able to cope with the training. Tenma went back to the dungeon to get food for the chicks. The young man walked contentedly through the dungeon, accompanied by Siramaru, Solomon and Salmon. Today he will hunt exclusively for insects. Tenma and the company were on the fifth level. The hero hoped to find insects that would not scare the girls. The young man activated the search ability. After a moment, he felt some strange magic coming from here. Tenma decided to check out the strange source of magic. After a while, he came to the source of the magic. Tenma found a dead end in front of him. He assumed that it could be a magical barrier. It was quite a rare occurrence. Tenma concentrated and arrogantly stretched out his hand. He said that an ordinary adventurer would buy it here. Tenma used the anti-barrier spell and broke the wall in front of him. Seeing the passage, Tenma was filled with the desire to go forward. Tenma was bursting with curiosity. He wanted to find out what kind of treasure was behind the barrier. After passing further from the end of the tunnel, Tenmu was called by a voice, ordering him to stop. Two girls were lying in front of him, they were both badly injured, one of them lost consciousness. The other was on guard and protected her friend from Tenma. Seeing the girls, the young man was very surprised. Tenma stood in front of the girls and did not understand how people could come here. The girl in consciousness viciously shouted at the hero not to approach. Tenma, confused, began to explain that he would not harm them, and the monsters next to him were his comrades, not enemies. The girl pointed the sword at Tenma and said that the young man was lying, because he knew about the barrier. She asked Tenma if the Viscount's family had hired him. A huge cave serpent appeared behind Tenma and hissed at the young man. The girl in front of the boy shuddered. Tenma calmly turned around. Seeing the snake, Tenma took Kagurasumara out of his bag. Tenma calmly noticed that B-ranked monsters are rarely found at this level. He ordered Siramaru to step back. The girl warned Tenma that the snake would not take his sword, because it has heavy-duty scales. Tenma shifted his gaze to the girl. The snake attacked Tenma from above. In an instant, Tenma cut the snake into pieces. The girl opposite the young man was greatly surprised by the hero's abilities. After the battle with the monster, Tenma realized something. He assumed that the girls had erected a magical barrier to escape from the cave serpent. Tenma turned his gaze to the injured friend of the traveler. The injured girl was lying unconscious on her friend's shoulder. Tenma assumed that the snake had managed to bite the wounded stranger. The young man remembered that he had an antidote with him. Tenma began to rummage in the bag and later found the bottle he needed. The girl pointed the sword at Tenma again and warned him not to approach them. Tenma replied in confusion that it was just an antidote. He assumed that the incredulous girl had probably seen this before. The young man added that if they didn't hurry, it would be too late. His words attracted the girl's attention, and she ordered to give her a bottle of antidote. She held the flask to her friend's mouth and asked her to drink the contents. After the girl drank the medicine, Tenma said that now it's a small matter. The young man spread his arms and used the healing wind spell. The wounds on the unconscious girl's legs began to heal. Her friend immediately noticed this. The wounded stranger began to move. Tenma thoughtfully added that at least for now she was not in danger, but the girl needed complete peace and rest and it was better not to try to move her out of here yet. The girl was still looking at Tenma with disbelief. The young man realized that she did not trust him at all. Tenma asked who they were, what they were doing in the dungeon, and if this was their first time in this place. Tenma realized that he would not be able to establish contact with the girl. Suramaru assumed that the girl was probably in a bad mood and wanted to eat. Tenma said that they had decided to have lunch and awkwardly asked the girls if they would join their meal. After a while, she shyly agreed. Tenma made a delicious soup. He poured the soup on plates and was glad that the remains of the snake could be useful to him. Tenma and the company began to devour the soup with gusto. A young man realized that this meat is very soft and nutritious. When the poison girl comes to her senses, she will have to taste his soup. Immediately after these thoughts, the hero realized that snake meat should not be treated to girls. He remembered Amy's disgust at the sight of his meat. Tenma quickly shifted his gaze to the incredulous girl with a plate of his soup. He wanted to know her reaction to the soup. The girl's plate turned out to be empty, which greatly surprised Tenma. Tenma turned towards the girl and asked her if she would have more soup, because he still had his reserves. After a short silence, the girl pushed an empty plate towards Tenma and politely asked for more soup. This made the young man laugh and he assumed that everything was fine now. The girl turned sharply towards her friend, calling her aura. 
The previously unconscious stranger got up and answered her friend, calling her Jean. Jean looked at Aura in tears, she was very happy with her recovery. Aura started asking Jean what was going on. In response, Jean asked her friend about her well-being. Jean hugged Aura tightly and continued to sob with happiness. She told her that they were fine. Jean told Aura that the monster was gone, as was that guy Viscount. Tenma listened to the girl's conversation with displeasure. He asked the strangers what they were like. Aura introduced herself and replied to the young man that they were slaves. She added that their master was a Viscount. Tenma doubted that they were slaves, because they behaved too well for slaves. Aura continued her story by saying that Jean was born into a family of aristocrats, and she was their maid. They grew up like sisters from childhood. Jean's face took on a sad color. Aura continued and told Tenma that Jean's family was caught up in the struggle for spheres of influence and was almost completely destroyed because of it. Jean added and said that only the two of them remained and they were sold to the Viscount. The girls said that the Viscount was despotic and often offended the girls. Tenma apologized to the girls. He apologized for making them remember the bad things. Tenma asked thoughtfully why the Viscount and the company had brought slaves with them to the dungeon. He sincerely did not understand the nobleman's plan. Jean replied that the Viscount did it because of his arrogance. Aura sadly added that their master had always been greedy and self-confident. She told me that the Viscount gathered a squad and personally went to the dungeon for rare artifacts and took them as servants. However, the Viscount overestimated his strength and because of this, they all died. The Viscount was afraid for his life and hoped that the snakes would attack the slaves. After the snake attacked the girls, Aura covered her mistress with herself and was severely injured. The Viscount did not take any action and quietly sacrificed the girls. They did not wait for the snake's next attack and rushed away. When the girls somehow reached the dead end, they immediately stretched the protective barrier. The Viscount furiously approached Jean's barrier and ordered the slaves to remove their protection. He said that slaves had no right to do that. Being outside the barrier, the whole company of the Viscount and he himself found themselves in the mouth of a snake. Jean and Aura couldn't get out because of the snake, they didn't know what to do. When Jean was almost completely in despair, Tenma appeared. Jean apologized for immediately grabbing the sword at the sight of Tenma. Jean added by saying that she initially thought that Tenma was looking for a Viscount. She was afraid that the young man would deal with him after learning that they had thrown him to his death. After hearing the story of the slaves, Tenma's spirit sank. The young man kept his cool mind and assumed that the girl really wasn't lying to him. He checked the status of the girls with the analysis skill. It turned out that Jean is a cursed child. Tenma was surprised by what he saw. He did not know whether Jean deliberately did not tell about the status. The girls asked the young man what Mr. Tenma was going to do with them. Tenma replied amiably that he would not harm them and would take them to the surface. Aura replied that she wasn't talking about that. The girl said that they were grateful to Tenma for saving them, but if they returned after all that had happened to them, they would be sold again, and perhaps even singly. Aura told Tenma that they had a request for him. Aura tearfully began to ask Tenma for a favor. The girl recovered and asked Mr. Tenma to take them in. Tenma and the girls managed to get to the surface. Jean and Aura breathed a sigh of relief. They were very glad that they had been saved by the master. The hero understood that all the problems were still ahead. If he walks in the company of girls in this form, then they will start to think badly of him. Tenma told the girls that they needed to get out of here as soon as possible. God forbid any of their friends would meet. Tenma wanted to get to the hotel as soon as possible, and then explain everything to Amy there. He was sure that after listening to him, she would find them clothes. Tenma hurried the girls by saying that everything would be fine if they didn't run into anyone. At the same time, Jin, in the company of a girl, saw a young man at the entrance to the dungeon. Tenma looked at him in horror. Jin greeted Tenma joyfully, he was glad to meet him. The girl next to the adventurer looked at the slaves in surprise. After a moment, Jin also noticed the girls next to Tenma. Jin and her friend assumed with horror that Tenma had bought slaves. The hero sharply replied to them that this was not the case. He decided to explain the situation to Jin and his girlfriend. Long explanations began. After Tenma's explanation, the adventurers came to their senses. The young man exhaled with relief. After listening to the hero's explanation, the adventurer girl noticed an important detail. The girl said that if Tenma did not claim them, they would be put up for sale again. The slaves listened dejectedly to the girl's story. Tenma thought to himself that if a good man buys slaves, then there is nothing wrong with that. Aura turned to Mr. Tenma. She expressed a desire to ask the young man for a favor again. With her words, she puzzled Jin and the adventurer. Aria and Jean crossed their arms over their chests and tearfully asked to become Tenma's property. Tenma dejectedly began to explain his position. 
Aura interrupted the gentleman, reminding him that if Tenma left them, then no one would be able to guess what misfortunes might happen to them. In the worst case, they will simply be sold separately. Jean added that they would like to repay Tenma for his kindness and also asked the gentleman to keep them. They both added that they were used to slave life, and therefore I could do anything. Tenma coolly apologized and replied that he had passed. His answer surprised the girls a lot. Jin and the adventurer were unhappy with Tenma's decision. The adventurer felt sorry for the girls. Tenma coldly added that he did not need slaves. The slaves accepted the master's words with annoyance. Tenma added that if those who happened to be slaves would accidentally help him on his travels, then he would not refuse such companions. Tenma's final answer surprised the slaves greatly. Jin and the adventurer accepted Tenma's decision with approval. The girls respectfully thanked the gentleman. The adventurer cheerfully summed up that everything was resolved. This attracted Tenma's attention. The girl defiantly flew into the side of the young man and asked him to lend her these girls for a while. Tenma was discouraged by his friend's request. The adventurer reminded that Tenma would not be able to walk around with them like this. Tenma unconditionally agreed with his friend. She waved cheerfully at the young man and added that she would send them to his hotel later. Tenma waved back amiably. Jin grinned coquettishly, which turned the young man's attention to himself. He quipped that Tenma had said one thing in words, but in fact another. He quoted the young man's speech at the moment of the conversation about his comrades. Tenma embarrassedly asked Jin to stop fooling around. Tenma returned to the hotel accompanied by his pets. He did not see Amy at the main entrance and assumed that she was training at the back entrance. He asked Siramara and Slaylin to wait inside. Tenma cheerfully came to the back entrance, where he noticed a stunned Amy. As he got closer, he saw that the girl was alone surrounded by a bunch of unknown guys. Amy looked uncertain. Tenma realized that he had never seen these guys. He abruptly headed towards the girl. He was very much afraid for his girlfriend. The young man did not know what a bunch of unknown people wanted from Amy. Approaching Amy Tenma, he fell to the ground. Amy happily told Tenma that she had found tamer friends. Unknown to Tenma, people looked at his landing in disbelief. Tenma was very confused after Amy's words. After a while, the leader of their group laughed a lot. He added that he was not surprised that they had shown Tenma to be suspicious. Tenma was curiously holding a black card in his hands. It was the business card of the tamer guild. This surprised Tenma a lot. A man in luxurious clothes showed a desire to introduce himself. The tall man said that he was a representative of the guild of Agli Monocart. He asked the young man if he was the same Tenma. The hero looked at Agli with bewilderment. Agli turned his attention to the dragon sitting on Tenma's head. He said that he had heard rumors about a real dragon, but they had only seen such a phenomenon a few times. He clarified that small dragons are still tame. The whole group looked in surprise at the little animal sitting on Tenma's head. They admired the dragon's appearance and considered the young man's pet very cool. Tenma was confused by the gaze of the tamer company. Ebli turned to the handlers accompanying him. He asked his guys to take the initiative to introduce themselves. Two cheerful men apologized for their impolite behavior and introduced themselves. One of them was named Ted, and the other was named Light Sidor. Two more men introduced themselves after them. They were twins, their names were Akagi Sakurat and Aoki Sakurat. After the presentation of the twins, Ugly took the initiative back into his own hands and decided to introduce Tenma to his pets. After a few seconds, Ugly summoned a large, formidable ape with a large one and a half sword. Ugly stated that his pet's name is the Wrestler Monkey. Ted and Light called their pets after Ugly. Ted's pet was Thunderbird, she was an ace in aerial combat. And Light's pets were predatory lynxes, he had many similar individuals who looked quite pretty. Two twins decided to show their pets. The brothers summoned the fire tiger and the mountain turtle. Their peculiarity was that they could both control them. Tenma was glad to meet other tamers. He noted to himself how many pets they had with different abilities. Ugly wanted to start his speech. Ugly told Tenma that all of them, as he could understand from the name, were tamers and worked together. He also added that there have been fewer tamers lately. The twin brothers' faces took on a sad tone. Ugly said that once there was a huge tamer guild here in Seijie, but over time, with a decrease in the number of members, it disappeared. Tenma agreed and noticed that he was able to discover Amy's gift randomly. Amy listened contentedly to Ugly's story. Ugly continued and said that the gift of warriors and magicians immediately catches the eye. Plus it is sometimes not easy to find a monster that you can subdue. Amy was interested in his words. Ugly, with a serious expression on his face, added that this was why they wanted to revive the guild. He supplemented his speech by saying that they appeal to everyone who wants to become tamers and outstanding personalities. Tenma noticed that this was why they had come to Amy. 
Ugly said that their unspoken rule is to help each other. They don't recruit her to join their team at all. He also believes that Amy's presence will benefit them. Tenma realized that it would be selfish to invite her to him. It would be better for her to gain different knowledge. He asked the girl what she thought of their proposal. Amy's face was glowing with happiness. This made Tenma happy. Tenma replied that he didn't have to ask. His answer surprised Amy and amused the Tamer boys. Tenma and Ugly shook hands, and we wished each other good luck. The Tamer guild moved on. Tenma turned to Amy, which managed to get her attention. He asked the girl if she could find two more rooms. Amy replied worriedly that it would not be difficult for her. She noticed that it happens in the dungeon. Tenma replied in confusion that a lot of things had happened. In the distance, he noticed an adventurer waving at him. Lena came closer to Tenma and notified him of her arrival. Tenma was glad to see her. After that, he noticed the girls walking nearby. Lena happily asked the young man how he liked the new look of girls. Jean and Aura appeared in a new guise in front of the young man. The young man liked the new images of the girls. Tenma cheerfully replied that their new outfits were very becoming to them. With his answer, he confused Jean and delighted Aura. Jean had not forgotten that they had been slaves before. She apologized for the fact that Lena had to spend so much money on her. Lena cheerfully replied that it was not difficult for her. Suddenly Amy turned to the young man. In embarrassment, she reproached Tenma for being too nice to them. Tenma asked Amy if she was okay. It took at least an hour to dispel Amy's discontent and explain the situation. Tenma pointed at the new companions and said that he would like the girls to have a place to stay too. He asked Amy if it could be arranged. Amy continued to stare at Tenma resentfully. She snorted and said she understood Tenma's intentions. By that time it was already dark. Tenma asked for two rooms. Amy replied that she would arrange everything now. Aura said they could share a room. Tenma was very surprised by this answer and objected. Jean confirmed Aura's words. Both girls have given their consent to live in the same room, because it will be safer for them. After a while, Tenma was already sound asleep in his room. Turning his head to the side, he noticed that he had bumped into something. It turned out that Tenma was lying on the chest of some suddenly appeared stranger. Not realizing who it was, the young man screamed in surprise, calling the girl an uninvited guest. The girl replied that it was very cruel of him. Tenma woke up in a strange place. He asked the girl if she was a goddess. The girl replied that they hadn't seen each other for quite a while. Tenma asked the girl what exactly she was the goddess of. With his question, he drove her into a stupor and slight bewilderment. The girl started crying and said that Tenma was a very rude guy. She replied that she was the goddess of love, of course, because she hugged him so warmly. Tenma laughed mockingly. He didn't really understand how he was supposed to remember it. He asked her, confused, what had happened. The sadness disappeared from the goddess's face, and she joyfully remembered the purpose of her visit. After a short pause, the goddess replied that she had come because of the girl she had saved. She clarified that she would still give him trouble. The goddess of love suggested that Tenma had already realized this himself. Tenma asked if she was referring to his status check using magic. He asked her about the status of the cursed child. The goddess replied that they also thought about what to do and eventually decided that it was not worth interfering directly, so she would give him advice. She replied that she needed to get rid of it as soon as possible. Tenma was greatly surprised by the goddess's answer. The goddess said that her curse lives by absorbing people's luck, everyone around falls under its influence and trouble begins to happen to him. Tenma realized that it was because of this that he and Aura were enslaved. When the curse reaches a critical point, she will die due to an overly concentrated misfortune. Tenma thought that this could be considered a good outcome. The goddess continued by saying that the curse after death chooses its new bearer from those people who are nearby, and this person becomes the new cursed child. The goddess said that her status as a saint in such a case has a negative role. Thanks to the increased luck of the saints, the curse develops only faster. Who knows how many more it will spread to. She added that Tenma is not in danger because he has divine protection, but the people around him will become new victims, so they would not want Tenma to remain under her negative influence. She added thoughtfully that this curse seemed to have a mind. Tenma angrily declared that he would not leave her just because of the goddess's story. He asked the goddess if there was a way to lift the curse. The goddess looked at Tenma thoughtfully. She replied to the young man that for this she needed divine protection, which the gods have. But the gods are only interested in Tenma, so they are unlikely to help. The goddess added that if Tenma certainly wants to help, then he will have to perform a number of actions. In the morning, it's dark when she wakes up in her bed. He gets up from his bunk. After getting out of bed, Tenma wonders if it will be possible to carry out the goddess's plan. The hero decides that first he needs to talk to Jean. He promises his gaze at the male opening in the door, a letter was sticking out of it. 
Tenma picks up an unknown letter and unfolds it. Tenma had a letter in her hands. It was left by Jean, in which she asked Tenma to take care of Aura. Tenma couldn't believe what he had written. He realized that Jean was trying to distance herself, which was not playing into his hands. Tenma runs out of the hotel at the entrance. He notices an Aura that is heading towards his room. Aura, in tears, notifies that when she woke up, Jean was no longer there. Tenma realized that his guesses had been confirmed. Tenma smilingly asked Aura not to worry and wait here. Aura was surprised by his words. Tenma ran with all his might. He assumed that Jean had just noticed her curse and was therefore trying to escape alone. He realized that Jean had not just agreed with Aura's decision to sleep in the same room. At that time, Jean was near the gate to the city. She was walking with a sad expression on her face. The girl mentally said goodbye to her friend and wished her happiness. On the way to the gate, two strangers stared at Jean from the bushes. Two men came out of the bushes. One of them asked Jean why such a young girl was traveling alone. Another added that it could be dangerous. Both men looked pretty creepy. Jean was confused and asked what they wanted from her. The men replied that they had simply taken the initiative out of the kindness of their hearts. Jean understood that these parts were full of robbers and monsters. One of the men grabbed Jean by the hand and invited her to go with them. He added that they were not some weaklings. The other supported his friend and asked the girl to be a good girl, and started laughing angrily. Jean began to resist the men's actions. She pulled her hand out of the bandit's clutches with all her might. At that moment, someone was already standing behind the bandits. The bandits looked at the person behind them with fear. This person was Tenma, he and his companions were angry. The bandits recognized the famous adventurer and rushed away. Jean looked at Tenma uncertainly and began to speak. She asked with annoyance how Tenma managed to find her. The young man replied that he had accidentally found a girl but he used the ability of tracing to do the most business. Jean asked if Tenma could leave her alone. The young man assumed that the girl's request came from her curse. She asked the young man how he found out about her illness. Tenma was confused, he didn't know what to say to her. Tenma flippantly replied that the gods had told him about it. Jean looked at the adventurer incredulously. Tenma awkwardly added that this was true, although it sounded extremely strange. After that, Tenma took Jean by the shoulders and confidently said that he would come up with something. Jean's eyes lit up. Jean looked at Tenma in embarrassment. The young man continued and said that this was why Jean should believe him. After these words, he told the girl to undress. The girl was greatly surprised by Tenma's words, but there was not a drop of doubt in the adventurer's eyes. After Jean understood Tenma's words, she became very confused and angry. The girl bared her clothes and stood with her back to Tenma. Thanks to this, he was able to see her curse on her back. Jean asked confusedly if that was enough for him. The girl sat down on the ground. Tenma was standing behind her. He was looking at the damned bruise of the girl. Tenma realized that this was the cursed seal. She exuded an extremely high level of magic. The adventurer assumed that she was still alive only because of her saint power. Tenma will be able to break the power of the curse if he manages to surpass the power of the overgrown curse. Tenma was confused. He wasn't sure if he would be able to get rid of the curse. Jean sat quietly in place with her eyes closed. The situation was even worse than he had imagined, but he no longer had a choice. The adventurer gathered his thoughts and got down to business in earnest. He remembered the words of the goddess of love. In a dream, the goddess told him that first he needed to separate the curse from her body. The goddess's words alerted Tenma. Tenma asked the goddess how to do this, because he is not strong in counteracting curse's magic. The goddess replied that Tenma would need to collect the ingredients, which she would name now, to separate the curse from the girl's body. He needed holy water, fragments of magic stones, mandrake root and other components. Tenma started mixing all the ingredients together in one flask. He asked Jean not to worry and assured her that it would help to lift the curse. He poured the contents of the bottle into a plate. Tenma handed the plate to Jean. After that, he cut his finger with a knife. The blood from the finger poured into the plate. The goddess said that the elixir needed the blood of the owner of divine protection, the blood of Tenma. Jean looked uncertainly at the medicine plate. She asked Tenem if the curse would go away if she drank the contents of the plate. After that, she started drinking the elixir. Tenma watched this process with a serious expression on his face. After Jean drank Tenma's potion, she felt severe pain. From the feelings she felt, Jean screamed with all her might. Tenma watched the process in horror. He remembered the goddess's words that thanks to this potion, Jean would temporarily have a powerful defense. Thus, the curse will be forced to leave the body of the bearer. Jean looked at the curse coming out with resignation. Tenma froze in horror. The curse left the girl's body in the form of black smoke. This smoke subsequently formed into a large black skull. It was the true face of the cursed child. 
The guys watched the pure evil with horror. Tenma didn't understand how anyone could survive with such a creepy thing in their own body. After a moment, the curse began to release strong gusts of wind and form into a sphere. Tenma watched the process very seriously. The energy from the curse rushed at the girl again. At the same moment Tenma conjured an antipole on the girl. After creating an anti-field around the girl, he began to form a second one. This time, he built a barrier around the whole curse. Thus, he created a zone surrounded by two antipoles. Setting up a double barrier was not an easy task for Tenma, but he did it. He managed to seal the curse. The young man's face looked tired. However, now the curse will not be able to return to the girl's body and will not be able to move into someone else. There's only one thing left for him to do. Tenma took a sharp look at the curse and began to conjure. Tenma began to absorb the curse into himself. By doing this, he greatly frightened Jean. She did not want the curse to be transferred to him. With a scream, the curse entered Tenma's body, leaving behind only piles of smoke. A curse mark formed on Tenma's face. This caused great pain to the adventurer. Jean realized that Tenma had taken over the curse from her. Through the pain, the hero smiled and looked towards the frightened Jean. He replied that everything would be fine now. After these words, Tenma's body began to glow. He left the problem with the curse for divine protection. Jean was blinded by the light coming from Tenma. She was in absolute disbelief. Tenma remembered the goddess's words. Earlier, the goddess had told him that when Tenma sealed the curse, it would surely move into him. After these words, Tenma got scared and asked the goddess if it was dangerous. The goddess flippantly replied that it could well be dangerous, but his power, combined with their protection, should destroy the curse at the moment of its transition into the body of a young man. The goddess added that she had never encountered such a thing before, so she could not give Tenma any guarantees. She asked the hero if he intended to continue even after he heard about the healing procedure. Tenma's face looked displeased. The curse completely filled his body. Tenma hoped very much for luck and wished with all his heart to get rid of the curse. He wanted everything to work out. A strong gust of wind began to emanate from Tenma. After a moment, he felt normal again. Jean was very concerned about his condition. She asked the young man if he was okay. Tenma replied that he was fine, but he felt some bitterness in his mouth. He took out a strange black stone from his mouth. He put it between his palms and slapped it. Tenma flopped down wearily on the ground and exhaled. Jean asked the young man uncertainly where the curse had gone. Tenma replied with a calm expression that everything was fine now. He added that he had managed to absorb the curse. With their statement, they greatly puzzled Jean. Jean did not believe her master's words at first, but Tenma assured her that it was true. The girl looked at Tenma with relief. The young man was embarrassed and reminded the girl about the clothes. Tenma got to his feet and held out his hand to Jean. With a smile, he invited the girl to go home to Aura. New tears rolled into Jean's eyes. She took Tenma's hand and joyfully agreed. Tenma, Jean and Aura were walking through the dungeon. Today, the three of them went to it. Jean and Aura understood that their primary task was to help Mr. Tenma. Jean asked Tenma what level they would reach today. Tenma replied that he did not know. He assumed that they would be able to reach the 20th level, depending on how things were going. Jean replied with a smile that she understood what Tenma was talking about. Aura was watching the two of them. Aura realized that her friend had changed a lot after that incident. Jean happily told Tenma that if he needed anything from her, let him just tell her. The young man simply agreed. Jean walked side by side with the hero. Aura realized that her companions had become much closer. She did not know what had happened between them. Before entering a new level, Tenma notified the girls that monsters would become more difficult from this level and asked them to be careful. In perplexity, Jean asked Tenma what kind of monsters are found here. The young man replied to his companion that there were mainly insects on this level. The girls looked up and saw a bunch of various insects on the ceiling. Jean and Aura clung to each other and began to shake in disgust. Tenma smiled and asked the girls to move away. After a while, all the insects were dead. The girls stared in horror at the mountain of corpses lying by the floor. After clearing the floor, the young man remembered something. He suggested that the girls might like it. The girls asked what Tenma had prepared for them, and they had a bad feeling. Tenma took out a fresh caterpillar that was still alive. The sight of the caterpillar scared the girls away. Tenma came closer to Jean. She, in turn, asked Tenmi not to approach her with this insect in her hands. The young man objected and reminded about the situation in which the girls ate a snake. Jean argued that it was a critical situation and he was not an insect. Aura humbly watched what was happening. Tenma began to chew the still alive caterpillar with appetite, and Jean quickly moved back. Aura realized that the distance between them had returned to normal. After a while, the guys returned to the hotel. Amy was glad to see the guys back from the dungeon. 
Amy noticed that the guys had done a good job. Tenma happily announced to Amy that he had obtained food for her chicks. Amy was glad that Tenma brought food to her chicks, she was already completely used to the sight of insects. Jean still shunned the bugs that were disgusting to her. Amy asked Tenma if they had met Jin and the others. Tenma replied in surprise that he had not seen their group yet today. Amy added that in this case she should give Tenma a message. At this time her pets were eating bugs with an appetite. It was about a military tournament. Amy happily said that the full name of the tournament sounds like a demonstration military tournament in honor of the victory in wars. Tenma drew attention to the long name of the tournament. She added that it will be held in the capital. The tournament will be hosted by the royal family. For sure there will be many strong rivals. Those who win will gain fame and they will have a great chance to become knights or aristocrats. The number of participants is growing every year and has already exceeded 1,000 people. Amy invited Tenma to participate too, if he was interested. Tenma replied that, so, he planned to go to the capital. Jana clarified whether Tenma would participate in the tournament. The young man replied that he had completely different plans. Tenma wanted to visit the king, because the latter probably thinks that after the incident with the zombie dragon, Tenma died. The young man replied to the girls that he had a friend whom he planned to visit. Jean reacted sadly to Tenma's words, thus she attracted his attention. Aura said dejectedly that there were relatives of Jean in the capital. Tenma asked again and realized that it was quite logical because she was from a family of aristocrats. He added that then it would be easier for him to be accompanied by Jean. The girl loudly refused. After her loud refusal, Jean was embarrassed. She quickly clarified that she was not going to leave Tenma. Her words calmed the young man. Jean added that there is a disgusting womanizer in the capital, who even has several teenage slaves. Aura said that he has more than ten mistresses. Tenma listened awkwardly to the girls' conversations. He thought about it and said that it would be wrong to drag them into the company of such a person. Tenma added that in that case they could stay here. Aura objected and said she would be able to keep him company in the capital. Aura said that the two of them would go to the capital, and Jean would stay here and look after everything here. Then she added that it would be a date trip to the capital and asked Tenma's opinion on this. Aura's action exasperated Jean. Jean shouted that she would also go with the guys. Aura mockingly replied that she shouldn't force herself to do this. Jean began to ask Aura, displeased, what kind of date she was talking about. Her friend, in turn, continued to tease Jean, adding that it would be just the two of them. Tenma sat on the sidelines and watched the girls talking. He noticed how much they had separated. Tenma stood up and told the girls to calm down. He added that if something happens, he will be able to protect them, so they don't have to worry about anything. The next morning, the guys went to the capital. At this time, a stranger came to book a room with Amy. While filling out the paperwork, he noticed that peaceful birds were sitting next to the girl. He asked the girl if her pets were sitting next to her. Amy apologized and hastily subdued the birds. She replied to the stranger that she had originally planned to go to the Tamer Guild. The stranger asked Amy if she had learned to control animals there. Amy replied with a smile on her face that Tenma had taught her how to control animals. The girl did not have time to finish the sentence because the stranger loudly shouted her teacher's name with a questioning tone. With his cry, the stranger scared both the girl and the birds. Amy replied in disbelief that he had a white Fenrir and a slime under his command. Amy asked what exactly had confused him. The stranger turned his back on Amy. He realized that it was Tenma who was still alive. It was an old wizard he knew. Clear skies, Tenma drives a cart in fine weather. While driving the cart, Tenma suddenly sneezes. After sneezing, the young man assumed that someone was spreading gossip about him. Jean asked if the hero was feeling well. Tenma cheerfully replied that he felt fine. He assumed that pollen could get into his nose and cause a sneeze. Jean handed Tenma a handkerchief and asked him to use it. Tenma smiled and thanked Jean for the service, which made Aura grin. Aura decided to make fun of Jean and said that they looked like a couple in love. Her words slightly confused Jean. Jean angrily said that Aura could mock as much as she wanted, because she was already used to her nagging. This upset Aura a bit. Jean rebuked her friend and told her not to have fun teasing others. Aura replied that it was very boring. Tenma did not listen to the girl's conversation and watched the dragon fly by. The young man stopped the cart. Tenma became quiet and then said that they would take a short detour. At this time, another, more expensive wagon was rushing away from a rabid buffalo. There were two noble persons in this carriage, a guy and a girl of some noble family. The guy was in a state of confusion and did not think about how they could break away from the bull. The girl was very scared and clung to the boy's chest. A second later, the coachman drew his highness's attention to some kind of trouble on their way. Tenma's cart was in front of them, 
and the young man himself stood in front of it. Tenma shouted to the coachman to keep moving. The young man's actions scared the aristocrats. Tenma erected a large stone wall in front of the bull. The enraged bull slammed into Tenma's barrier and fell on its side. The coachman and two ladies of the noble family understood that they were now saved. The coachman said he didn't know how to thank him for his help. Tenma replied that it was not difficult for him. He asked why minor ox chased the cart, because he is a peaceful animal. The noble lady sitting in the carriage felt awkward. The girl sitting in the carriage cheerfully replied that they just wanted to play a joke. The guy next to her arrogantly said that it was boring to drive and lit a fire spell in his hand. He added that they decided to scare the calf they were passing by with magic. Tenma listened with displeasure to the story of the unfamiliar crew. After that, he stated with a serious face that this should not have been done. With his answer, he led the noble gentleman into perplexity. Tenma added that his mother was obviously chasing them, because it is inherent in nature that parents will try to protect their children, even at the cost of their own lives. As a result of the actions of a careless aristocrat, he had to kill the cub's mother to save their crew. Tenma angrily added that because of their quirks, the poor calf was now an orphan. The noble gentleman froze. He realized what a stupid thing he had just done. The guy replied that he did not want the bull to die. Tenma got back into his carriage. He told his companions that they had to continue on their way. Tears began to appear on the face of the guy in the rich carriage. The young lady sitting next to him noticed this. Tenma exhaled and added with a slight smile that they needed to move faster before Minor Ox woke up. Tenma asked the nobles in the carriage if they realized their act and further clarified that he did not kill the mother of the beast, but caused a concussion. With these words, he delighted the nobles. The noble children replied to Tenma that they really regretted what they had done and thanked him for his help. The young gentleman introduced himself in embarrassment, calling himself Tid von Klasten. He also introduced his joyful sister Luna von Klasten. The noble lady asked if they could find out the name of the traveler who had saved them from the bull. Tenma introduced himself and said that he was just an ordinary adventurer. His words surprised the young man. He asked his name again. Tita asked if the adventurer in front of him was the same Tenma who killed the dragon. With such awareness, he put the hero into a stupor. After a little thought, Tenma gave a positive answer, clarifying that the dragon was a zombie. Tita happily stated that everything turned out as he expected. He mentioned that his grandfather had told about him, about the adventurer who killed a dragon and went missing, about the hero Tenma. His words puzzled the hero. Tita was full of happiness. He was incredibly glad that the adventurer Tenma turned out to be real. His sister looked at him in disbelief. Tenma, in turn, summarized the information about the children and realized that they were the grandchildren of the king. Tita happily asked Tenma to come to their capital. He also said that his grandfather and the chief magician still believe that he is alive. Tenma replied that he was on his way to the capital. The young man was lost in thought, trying to remember the main magician. During the hero's thoughts, Luna carefully approached him from the side and enthusiastically asked Tenma if Mr. Tenma was a dragon. Her words puzzled the adventurer even more. Tita quickly pulled Luna away from the hero and apologized. He added that their grandfather said that whoever can defeat a dragon by himself has the power of a dragon. The youngster noticed that this did not seem to be the case. Luna resisted her brother's actions. Tenma listened to the kids in disbelief. He assumed that their grandfather was spreading gossip. After that, Tenma turned his attention to the side and asked what was hiding from him in that direction. A man slowly came out of the bushes, he clarified that Tenma was able to notice him. A cunning man in armor came out of the bushes, he said that he wanted to come to their aid himself, but Tenma beat him to it. This was Dean Dyduran, a former first-class adventurer, Viscount, commander of the Royal Guard and the strongest man in the Royal Army. Tita was very happy when he saw Dean. Tenma asked Tita if he was accompanying them on the road. Tita cheerfully confirmed the adventurer's words. Tenma wondered why Dean was watching his actions from hiding if he had such high statuses. Tita joyfully offered to invite their savior, Tenma, to their capital. Dean and Tenma shook hands. Dean was greatly surprised to hear the adventurer's name. He confusedly asked the young man if he was the same Tenma. The perplexed adventurer asked if they had met before. The knight proudly declared that he was Dean Dyduran the twin brother of Ricardo, Tenma's father. The hero was very surprised to learn that Dean knows his father. Tenma asked Dean if he really knew his father. Dean proudly asked if Ricardo and Celia had told him about him. Dean noticed how well Tenma handled the monster. He paused for a moment, then asked Tenma if he wanted to fight. Tenma was greatly surprised by his words. Dean began to draw his sword from its scabbard. During this action he mentioned that his sword was made by Ricardo. 
Dean assumed that in battle he would believe that he was telling the truth. Tita began to reproach Dean for being impolite towards the savior. Tita looked at the hero distantly. After a short pause, Tenma smiled and said that he agreed to the duel. Tenma and Dean stood in front of each other. Tenma launched his attack, but before he could draw his sword from its scabbard, Dean was already attacking him. Tenma barely managed to dodge the blow. He didn't expect Dean to attack so early. In an instant after that, their swords crossed. Dean and Tenma began to attack each other with great speed. Tenma was shocked that Dean would be able to repel absolutely all of his attacks. He had the feeling that he was fighting with his father. Tenma realized that Dean was reading his actions, because he had been his father's student longer than him. Which is why Dean is so good with a sword. In this case, Tenma decided to apply body strengthening. Remembering the training with his father, Tenma changed his mind. He realized that he didn't need it now. At this time, Dean made a dash towards him and threw the young man aside. It was the first time Tenma had felt such elation after his father's death. He realized that he couldn't handle Dean right now. Before the young man could get to his feet, Dean's blade was already in front of his face. Tenma held up his hands in defeat. He gave up. The coachman, Jean and Aura were very surprised by Tenma's loss. He smiled and said that if Tenma had used magic, the result might have been different. Tenma told him about his decision not to use magic against an opponent like him. Dean asked if Tenma believed him now, and he gave a positive answer. There was a loud thumping from behind. It was someone's map, but Tenma didn't know that and assumed that the minor rocks had gone on the offensive. The map turned sharply in the direction of Tenpa, Tita, Luna, and Dean realized who she belonged to. An old man in luxurious clothes got out of the carriage. The old man who came out of the map told the children how worried he was when they secretly left the castle. It was their uncle. Tenpa and Dean simultaneously got down on one knee in front of the old man. This surprised Jean and Aura. Tenma introduced himself and told the noble that he was glad to meet him. He also introduced his companions, Jean and Aura. Tenma suggested that the old man might know about him. He called Uncle Theed and Luna the Grand Duke. It took a few seconds for Aura and Jean to realize who was standing in front of them. After learning the man's status, they both bowed before him. The duke asked who Tenma was and why he knew about his status. Tenma said that the old man's carriage has the coat of arms of the royal family and added that the uncle for Theed and Luna could well be the Grand Duke. But in fact, Tenma just checked his status. The duke laughed and said that the young man had managed to surprise him. He asked Tenma if they were heading to the capital. Tenma gave a positive response. The duke offered to accompany him. Tita asked for permission to ride in Tenma's carriage. Luna and Tita began to ask their uncle for permission. The duke gave his consent. The young man replied that there might not be enough room for everyone in his cart. The duke pointed at Aura and Jean and invited them to move into his carriage. After a while, the crew set off. The duke apologized for his persistence. He awkwardly informed the girls that they didn't need to be so tense. The two former slaves understood that this was impossible. At the same time, in Tenma's carriage, Tito was asking the young man about how his horse was moving. Tenma replied that it was a golem instead of a coachman. He added that he moves due to magical power, and his friend Slaylin controls it. At that time, the moon was looking at Solomon. She asked the young man what kind of animal it was. Tenma replied that it was Solomon, his little dragon. Tita noticed how cool it is to be friends with monsters. Luna was playing with Solomon. Tenma added that he still has Siramaru. Immediately after mentioning the owner, the wolf appeared from the back. Fenrir's appearance scared the children a lot. Tenma asked the pet not to jump out so suddenly. Siramaru got out of the bag completely and thus delighted the children. Shiramaru suddenly jumped out of the carriage and rushed off in an unknown direction. Tenma did not understand what was going on. He ordered Fenrir to return to his place.